Good morning, every peoples. Happy Friday. It's the end of the week. I hope you're excited. I'm excited. We've got a lot to do today, though. Let's get to it. Good to see everybody on Facebook today. Roman, Steven, Joseph, and of course, all of the regulars and the members and the Patreon supporters on YouTube today. We've got Random Fandom, Slatty Bardfast, Ludi Coden, Retro Wave, Laura L. Stodd, Sir Sithis917, Quintius, Ant444, Elliot, Ranger Conquest, Jeremy. What a night last night was. Uh, it's great to see you all bright and early this morning after our extended live stream last night for Scotch and Smoke Rings episode 720. We played Dead Space 3. And despite people uh, in the chat saying that it was the weaker of the three entries, so far I'm having a good time with it. They, the only thing that I think is going to take some adjustment for me is the new weapon crafting and modification system. Uh, instead of finding blueprints for weapons around, I mean, you still can find blueprints for weapons, but uh, it's much more of an in-depth crafting system where you've got to get resources like tungsten and, you know, positron emitters and all of that in order to craft unique weapons. I think once I get the hang of it, I'm really going to enjoy it. But so far, uh, so far, story-wise and combat-wise, it's very reminiscent of Dead Space 1 and 2, and I'm feeling right at home. So I look forward to continuing with Dead Space 3 uh, for Scotch and Smoke Rings. But this is Friday morning. It's not Scotch and Smoke Rings. It's Starfield time. In our last episode, we finally resigned ourselves to the fact that there's no way to level up the affinity of one of our companions who's destined to die before they actually die. So, sadly, we had to say goodbye to one of our companions. Spoiler alert for those of you who missed the previous live streams. Uh, probably should have said that earlier, but we made our decision. We now have to deal with the consequences, and I am at the point now where I have to decide what to do next. Part of me really wants to complete the Constellation storyline. I'm getting getting mixed opinions in the chat. Some say to go ahead and finish it and then work on the rest of the game. Others say that if I do, I'm going to want to do a new game plus, or you know that it's going the, the story is going to make it so it's more difficult to do the other faction storylines. I don't know. Um, at any rate, I do know that there are a number of other artifacts out there that we could go after to try and get. We could start some of the faction storylines uh, and save the main plot for later. We could start whittling through some of our side quests, which we've been doing for the past two broadcasts pretty faithfully. Uh, we, we plowed through a number of them. We finally got our big, bulky starship, which uh, I was really excited about. Good to finally have it. Though I do need to work on the, the weapon systems for that particular starship. But before I can do that, I think I need to uh, invest in some perks. So maybe I'll save that for later. Garrett on Facebook says, How long do you plan on going today? I haven't decided. Probably going to be around four hours for today's broadcast. Maybe more, maybe a little bit less, just depending on how I feel. The kids have uh, shorter school days today, so they're going to be home earlier. I do have uh, care here at the house that will be able to meet them, so I don't necessarily have to step away as soon as they come home. But uh, I miss them, and I like seeing them, so maybe I will. We'll see how long I'm going to be broadcasting today, but I'm thinking around four hours. We had some strange connectivity problems yesterday. The uh, Comcast guy has really been letting us down. I thought, you know, by putting him in the closet, I would have solved the issue. Or by, um, you know, uh, keeping him, uh, you know, on a short leash, figuratively speaking, communicating through, you know, modern technology, <clears throat> as people, normal people do, would have solved the problem. But uh, no, we had some some bad connectivity issues yesterday. Thankfully, it only happened a few times during the broadcast and we were able to finish the broadcast. So far, my green light is solid green, which is a good sign. Hold on a second. So I'm hoping for a steady broadcast today. F 
Fiddler the Helper says you can always use console commands on an old save to force Barrett to advance his questline for lore purposes. Yes, and that is something that I typically do when I'm working on a lore video or a lore series. Um, I'll go through the, the, the quest line or the character affinity path normally the first time, and then I'll go back to older saves and use console commands to explore other options to see what I missed. And that's what I'll do for a lore video. Uh, that's why I'm collecting as many game saves as I possibly can. One of the frustrating things for me as a content, a content creator in my unique niche with Starfield is that in Fallout 4, every time you save your game, it takes a snapshot of what your character is looking at when you save it. So that when you go back through your game save files, you can actually see a snapshot of where you were, and it's going to help you decide if that's the right save file to load. But it's not that way in Starfield. In Starfield, it's just a big list of all of your save files. And the only indicator that you might be loading the right one is it lists the name of the planet or the interior cell where your character is when you save the file. It makes it a bit tricky when you want to backtrack to certain areas to explore other options. Um, so I have found out, you know, in the few lore videos that I've made for Starfield that it's a bit tricky to do. But it's not impossible. So um, I just got to kind of keep a mental map of where I was and what I was doing. Um, oh, the nice thing about streaming this live is I'm capturing every single live stream. And at the end of the live stream, I create a proxy to reduce the file size, then I load it into Adobe Premiere and I organize everything by day and I'll make notes of what I did so that I do kind of have a reference point in my editing software for when I need to go back. And in that way, it's helping me keep organized of all of the little side plots that I've done. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to um, produce a lot of lore content for Starfield once I get through the primary plot. But then again, I did this from Fallout 76 as well, and I made a lot of lore videos, but I never did a full series on the story of Fallout 76, and I've kind of lost my desire to do that. So, we, I mean, we covered all of the DLCs, but um, I don't really want to cover the main plot. It's just a huge behemoth of a plot. Jareth, with the first super chat of the day, says, I strongly suggest you start on the Vanguard quests. If you haven't already, it reveals a lot about the UC and the Xenos. I have started on them. In fact, I've already done one lore video on Project Pet Shop, which, of course, covers on the Xeno Warfare Division with the Red Devils. Um, and it's really interesting. It's fascinating stuff. And we started on the UC Vanguard plot as well. That's how we got the first Crimson Fleet quest. Uh, because we worked with them. So, uh, maybe we'll do that today. I mean, that does sound fun. Yeah, maybe we'll do that today instead of uh, plowing forward with Constellation quests. Even though I really kind of want to see the end of the Constellation story. But if we have to defeat characters like the Hunter uh, time and time again while c hunting down those artifacts, perhaps it's better if we build up our character first. I love Call of Duty says, what are you going to start? I smoke a cigar and have a little chat, but no, no, I'm going to start. All right, let's load. Um, I think this is the manual save I did. Yeah, and that's my exit save. McChasler, a member for nine months, says, Hello, Ox. Hope you're enjoying the game so far. I am constantly on the search for adhesive, which in the far future is still so damned elusive. I hate it. <laughs> it is. It's frustrating. You know what's frustrating to me is at the very beginning of my gameplay of Starfield, I was seeing big rolls of duct tape lying around, and my Fallout instincts kicked in, and I'm like, oh, I gotta get that because of the adhesive. And so I'm looting all of this duct tape, only to find out later that you can't actually get adhesive from the duct tape in the game. Like, what? You can't get adhesive from the duct tape? Why? That was annoying. So all of that duct tape, and I couldn't even use it for adhesive. Shame DSG says, it's always adhesive. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Why is it always adhesive? Well, here we are in the eye. How are you feeling, Sarah? 
Noel and Vladimir are right. The artifacts need a new home. Okay. Mr. Master Chief says, Crimson Fleet Quest, I hear. Did you commit the crime when U.S. Uh, system def capture you and put you in the undercover mission? Mr. Master Chief, what? Did you commit the crime when the U.S. C when the UCS, when the U.C. system def captured you and put you in? If, I think you're talking about something I haven't actually done yet. I got the first quest for the Crimson Fleet. I haven't started it yet, so uh, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about just yet. I love COD says you're my favorite YouTuber. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I love COD. I'm glad I started soon enough for you. Hopefully the, the, the intro monologue, the talking, you know, just chatting before we start. I hope that that didn't take too long. Here I am in the gameplay. Make you happy. There we go. Okay. So we've got to create some artifact thing, right? On the ship. Armillary screen. Build the armillary. You can now move the armillary. Starburn attacks are more likely wherever the armillary is placed. If you choose to keep the artifacts in your inventory, then attacks are more likely everywhere. Oh, God. Oh, no. This means I'm going to get attacked in space by the Starborn. More often than not? Oh no. Maybe I should just keep it in my inventory. Crap. Well, as is always the case when I first start a live stream, we've got some inventory management stuff that we've got to take care of. So let's go to the lodge. Let's go through all our junk. Wait, Barrett was holding a bunch of my stuff, wasn't he? Shoot, I forgot about that. There's nothing in my safe. Is it in my cargo hold? Maybe? Was this did, was he holding this? I think it might have been. Alright. Let's organize our stuff at the lodge. And I'm encumbered. Yeah, I think he was carrying these credits. Why? All right, let's uh, sell some of our stuff here. Disassembler Orion. I think this is my only rare Orion, so I should save it. Uh, don't need that. Don't need that. Titanium Ripshank. I mean, it is legendary. Zarteth says, consider doing the anti-Xeno quests before the Crimson Fleet. The former is so much more intriguing. Well, Zarteth, I, I realize that based on your gaming experience, you kind of know what you would like to see. But as someone who hasn't uh, been exposed to, you know, many of the side plots within in the game yet, I'm kind of curious about everything, and I'm not sure exactly what I would like to see. That said, I had planned on doing Vanguard first anyway. The Crimson Fleet is an enemy faction, and uh, I think I really don't want to do their story until last anyway. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do them eventually, but they're not my priority. Julian Z says, good morning, Ox. So good to see you on this Starfield Friday. Hope you're well. I honestly suggest just finishing the main story quest and explore the rest of the game in a new game plus. You'll see why when you get there. 
the chat is so conflicted. I can't, I can't do anything right. Like, whatever choice I make, someone hops on here to say that they would have done a different choice. Well, Julian, I appreciate your perspective, especially since you've been a longtime viewer and you've helped me out so often and you've beat the game and you know what you're talking about. But I think what I want to do right, right now is I think I want to save the Constellation quest for later. I think I'm going to work on faction quests for now. Honestly, and it's probably because I don't know what the new Game Plus entails, but the entire idea of a new Game Plus bothers me. I don't like the idea of a narrative where you have to play through the entire game again to get the most out of the game. Um, but maybe they do it in a way that makes perfect sense, and I just don't understand that yet because I haven't gotten to that point. Rachel says, maybe put the artifacts at an outpost with some turrets so that space minivan stays safe. Maybe Space Preston will show up to tell you your outpost needs help. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I uh, haven't done any settlement building yet, and I don't know if I really have it in me to do that today. But there will be a day when that's all I really want to do, and when that day comes, perhaps I'll build the armillary on an outpost. Unrestrained Vengeance. That's a laser... Is that another Orion? It is. I've got two Orions. Okay. This is a named one. With the Hitman legendary effect. 15% damage while aiming. This one does more damage to robots. This does less damage overall, but that's mainly due to the mods, I think. No, no. The base damage for this one is actually greater. Why? Is it a higher quality weapon? It doesn't have any unique mods installed. Whereas this one does too. Why does this one do more damage? Oh well, I can always upgrade it later, so I'm going to sell this one. Since I have Unrestrained Vengeance, and we'll save that one. Zarteth says, to be clear, I would never presume to choose for you. Was only a consideration request. Priority is always fun for you first. Of course, thank you, Zarteth. I knew as much, and I do appreciate all of your perspective. Okay. Calibrated Navigator. Energy is actually better. But physical is way worse. It's like a hundred worse. Well, not near, not, not quite, but almost a hundred worse. So we'll sell it. Uh, yeah, we'll sell it and sell it. Helmets, way worse. We'll sell it. Apparel. Oh, that's right. I've got a Demos cap. Uh, okay. Let's sell any aid that is weighing me down. Let's sort by weight. Supernova, a liqueur, slush, floated over sour punch of exotic alien fruits. This increases persuasion chance. Oh! Oh, man, I missed this on my lore video about persuasion. Well, my, my narrated video about persuasion. And then the rest of these are only 0.10. That's not too bad. All right, well, I'll keep them then. Wade Speakerman says, Ox, you do. You, you are the master of your own destiny. <laughs> Thank you, Wade Speakerman. I, I, I love being the master of my own destiny. Let us dust and forth. Present 99 says, you don't have to worry about Game Plus right now. All choices and connections. Um, why Game Plus makes sense in context with all of this will become clear. Don't stress yourself out with all of this stuff. Just listen to what happens in game. That's where my focus is going to be. Thank you very much, Present 99. Okay. Oh, and then here's my red harvest reserve. Thankfully, it doesn't have a weight. At least I don't think it has a weight. Does it have a weight? Eh, point. No. It's a pound. Ah, oh, it's an entire pound. I'll store it in my safe until I can find a place to put it. And do I need Solomon's maps anymore? I don't think I do. But it is unique, so I don't want to get rid of it. Colonel 87th says, I don't know what this game's trying to be, Mass Effect or a Fallout game, plus doesn't make any sense in a game like this. Play on, sir? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, I think it's certainly been inspired by other games like Mass Effect. I think even Fallout 4 was inspired by Mass Effect, um, if you take a look at the dialogue wheel that they introduced. So there's certain inspiration from other uh, sci-fi franchises in this game, but I don't think it's trying to be either Fallout or Mass Effect, I think it's trying to be its own unique thing. And I think there's enough uniqueness in this game 
to give it that, to give it it to give it its own claim to to uniqueness. Um, I don't feel like I'm playing Mass Effect by playing this game. I don't feel like I'm playing Fallout by playing this game. I feel like I'm playing something new, and that's what I was really hoping for. Um, Art Pixel says, "Have you gotten a perk for weapon mods? So much fun! Not yet. That's my focus now. We maxed out persuasion. We got hacking to where we needed to get it. We've got we maxed out piloting." So those were the big major three things I wanted to do now. So I think we can safely focus on weapons. And so we need to, um, we need to perk into science a little bit until we can start specking into weapon mods. And then we can finally start to upgrade our weapons the way we like. Super Nitaku 64 says, Hey Ox, hope you're liking the Starfield lore. Also, I'm looking forward to your lore video about the first contact mission. When you get to it, of course. Well, by the name First Contact, I'm thinking aliens. Well, we should have presumed that by the Starborn anyway. But yeah, I, uh, I will def the, the thing with lore videos, just so everybody understands, they take a really long time to do. Like, even if I s dedicate an, an entire week to making one lore video, it's sometimes cutting it short. So there's a ton of content in this game. I've already made a few lore videos, and every time I play, I see something I could make a lore video about. And I plan to do it, but it's going to take a while. So I, it might take years. Like, honestly, it might take, it took me several years to get through all of the Fallout content for all of the Fallout games. And I'm still not even done with the full primary plot of Fallout 4. <laughs> and that game's been out for almost 10 years now. So just bear in mind, I plan to do it. It's just going to take time, and I will prioritize things as I think is appropriate. Julian Z says, yeah, Ox, I understand. I have never played New Game Plus in any game I got, but in this game, it just, I, ugh, I can't explain it without spoiling it. I'll just say, Starfield got me to do New Game Plus. You have me intrigued, Julian. I got to say, you have me intrigued. Will it be compelling enough for me to give up my starship? All my settlements, all of the work that I've made with my companions, all my gear and my character upgrades, will it be enough to give up all of that for New Game Plus? I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Present99 gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Present99. And congratulations to Psycal, Lord Dracon, Richard Diaz, Zachary, and Zachary Hopkins, and Alexander Zabalza. Okay, we can now fast travel to the lodge, I think. Why is it no longer marked on the map? What? I can't fast travel to the lodge? What? What happened to the lodge? Oh, do they want- oh, I see. They want me to run through New Atlantis to see all the damage the hunter did. Even though I ran through really quickly to avoid the hunter doing a lot of damage. We see fire raining down from the sky, the sky thick with smoke. They don't want me to miss out on this. Oh my god. Holy cow. And that's just one Starborn. Keep moving. Right to the checkpoint. They tried to, to bring down a barricade and it didn't help. Look at this. <laughs> wow, this is fascinating. Attention. The spaceport has been secured. Safety precautions remain in place. Please wait for the all-clear signal before exiting your homes. That is all. If you were a victim of the recent attack, please remain calm. UC Security has everything under control. There's been an incident. Please continue going about your business. Oh my god. If you're with the press, we have no statements to make about the attack at this time. How are you today?
Colonel 87 says, I'm pretty sure you can buy property. Uh, yeah, you can get uh, a, a penthouse apartment at uh, Neon. I know that. It's done. Let's head home. Okay, well, this part doesn't seem too bad. Even though we ran through here with the hunter on our tail. No, we went through the well. That's right, we went through the well. That's why this was a spare. Gorgeous weather today, huh? Kelton, how are you? Oh. I was hoping we might run into one another again. <laughs> Your timing is most fortuitous. I'm on the verge of something, but I don't quite have all the information I need. I'm always eager to help, Kelton. You have no idea how much I appreciate that, truly. Of course, now that I understand more about what's going on, it seems plain as day. And yet I never would have imagined it before. The tertiary trunks have also liquefied their interiors, but they're not vibrating. I thought perhaps it was some sort of defect, but it's much simpler. They're listening. It's just a tree, Kelton. That's a very reductive and borderline insulting way of looking at things. <laughs> I believe this tree is sending vibrations out over massive distances and expecting to detect sympathetic vibrations in return. As of yet, there's been no response. I suspect that will not change, that a response is impossible, and that's very, very bad news. I mean, it's bad. Why is it bad? Define bad news. We're continuing to see an increase in the strength and frequency of the vibrations, I don't know how much more significant it'll become. If there's no response, the tree may vibrate itself and some nearby portion of the city to destruction. Now, as of yet, there has been no response, and clearly none of the nearby individuals are a correct match. While it can't be ruled out that the intended recipient of these messages was cut down during the city's expansion, there is one other possibility. Over a hundred years ago, the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective emerged from the Narian War. As a gesture of peace and goodwill, a near-literal olive branch, one of the trees from New Atlantis, was offered to the leaders of Aquila City. Ah. That seems like a nice gesture. Nice? Short-sighted and ill-advised, in my opinion. Of course you can't just uproot a native species and plunk it down on some other planet in a totally different environment and expect it to grow. Clearly no exobotanists were consulted ahead of time. The end result was wholly predictable. The tree died within a few short years. <clears throat> so that's a dead end. Pardon the pun. Clever, but no, not necessarily. The tree died, yes. But branches were kept. At least one still exists in the museum there in the city. If I had that branch, I could get DNA samples and then using various data I've gathered, I could attempt to simulate a response. We could then broadcast that response and hopefully calm down our friend here. But as I say, I need that branch. I mean, this is even assuming that that one tree given to Aquila City is the match for this one. It's a bit of a gamble. Um, and we could say, and we've finally arrived at the point. <laughs> or I'll be back with it as soon as I can. <laughs> I knew you would understand. The museum in Aquila City is under the supervision of one Miss Kassler, I'm told. I don't know anything about her, but hopefully she'll be willing to listen to reason and assist our cause. All right, off you go. We don't have any time to waste. All right, new mission, Late Bloomer. Super Nataku says, Oh, I know it takes time for lore videos and appreciate the work you put into them. I just thought that mission in particular, Ox will love this one. Well, I can't wait to tackle it. Thank you so much, Super Nataku. A Tingly says, NPCs seem pretty calm for just surviving an alien attack that damaged a large portion of the city. 
Yeah, everyone's sort of just walking around and minding their own business, aren't they? At least in this sector of New Atlantis. Devin Townsend says, Hey, Ox, good to see you. Hope that you're perfectly splendid. Got off work early, going to go grab a few things from the store, come back, have a cigar, and join the stream. Happy Friday, my friend. Oh, did it tag the wrong one? Yeah. Return to the lodge. Happy Friday. Hope you enjoy that cigar when you get back home. Have a good one. Barrett's belongings have been moved to the lodge basement. Well, we have a few signs of struggle here. Mateo. I will be monitoring everyone's vitals for signs really of continued tough. trauma. I know. Look, we all feel like we've been kicked into the ground a million times over, but I think I it's have some- rough for a while. I'm serious. Lodge has wounds that need healing. No more Starborn have shown up. Yet. Oh, uh, we got a Noel with our organic resources. Can we try this? Okay, let's take a look. Uh, biosuppressant. I need it for ammo. For, I need it for crafting, though. Any thoughts on the Starborn? You mean what could be the biggest discovery in the history of humanity? Yeah, I've got some thoughts. Scans are still inconclusive, but I think we've seen enough to know that we're dealing with something potentially even more unusual than the artifacts. There are so many questions beyond just who are they? How did they find you? How do they know about the artifacts? Why has no one ever seen them before? Don't worry, we'll get answered. They Answers. did openly threaten you, as I understand it. I'd say that's something to worry about. It was one thing when this was just about us investigating the artifacts. Uh, a weird phenomenon that didn't come with creepy threats or questions about aliens or whatever it is that's going on now. I know we'll figure it all out in the end. It's just kind of a lot right now. The Lodge is still our home. We'll make it feel that way again. If I may, I know our encounter with the hunter is the last thing anyone wants to talk about right now, but he said something that I can't get out of my mind. Unity. Do you remember that? Yeah, he said our part in glimpsing the unity was over. Because he was stopping us implying that we were getting closer to it. The thing is, I've heard that word before. It's an important concept in Keeper Aquilus' speeches. The priest? Is the Sanctum Universum going to bless our little crusade of discovery? It can't be a coincidence. The Sanctum has always believed that answers are out there in the stars. Look, I know it's the longest of shots and the biggest leap of faith I could ever ask us all to take, but... Why not talk to him? I mean, I'm not really thrilled with the idea of uh, a unity. I mean, the master from the Fallout universe believed in unity too. And look where that brought him. It's just a word, Mateo. You're grasping at straws here. Or we can say, where is the Sanctum Universum anyway? It's right here in the city, just a block or so from the lodge. You're right. It's too big of a coincidence not to try. There's no harm in gathering more information. A visit to the Sanctum might actually be quite enlightening. Thank you. Ugh. I know it's not much to go on, but something about this feels right. I'll meet you over there. Hearing her voice makes me almost... We'll get uh, through this. Those Starborn aren't gonna stop us. Regret my decision. Okay, Samco and Drea available for the crew. New mission, Unity. Talk to Keeper Aquilius. Okay, Sam, how are you feeling? The Lodge is still our home. 
We'll make it feel that way again. Depends on the question. Shoot. Nothing new. Andrea! We can pay to fix the damages, but, well... Something the Lodge feels a little colder than it used to. I wanted to thank you for giving me the chance to work with you. I know we met under, um... Unusual circumstances. You seem to be acclimating well to Constellation. Are you enjoying working with them? Um, I'm starting to think I should have kept my day job. The pay isn't great, but the people are all right. It's certainly not like anything I've done before. I think none of us were expecting what we have found. Well, perhaps, Matteo. You have certainly become a vital part of the organization. That is a credit to your abilities. If I may, from what you have seen, do you think I fit in well with the rest of Constellation? If you're asking, I, must, I assume you feel like you don't. Or fitting in is overrated. You're certainly very unique. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little rough. Or right, let's talk about this some other time. Um, let's try number one. No, I do not. But I find it hard to quantify. Many of the other members are polite, but distant. I worry that my background and my actions concern them. I have not shared much, but everyone knows I worked with smugglers for years. I am no stranger to violence and death. Sounds like fun. I'm sure you did what you had to do. Accepting the unfamiliar can be hard for people where you don't seem to be bothered by your past. Let's try I'm sure you did what you had to do. Yes, exactly. I survived. That was the only goal. For those that have not lived it, it can be difficult to imagine or accept. Others here have seen conflict, but for more noble causes. Vladimir is the only one here who can begin to understand. He was the one who pressed the group to include me. I lack his charm. He puts others at ease. I fear my presence does the opposite. Well, she just needs a little bit of confidence. How can we get that for her? Um, oh, we find a flirt option. Trust me, you have a lot going for you. Uh, that is kind of you. You also have a lot... G going. Uh, I, I am. I, I find expressing affection difficult, but, um, but truly. Thank you. I know this seems trivial, uh, perhaps childish. I have just always relied only on myself. I have never been surrounded by people like this, by a group I, I wish to be a part of. Does that make sense? You should really stop worrying about this. People love me, so being included has never really been a problem. I don't think what you're saying is childish, or I've always been a loner myself. Let's try number two. Thank you. That is reassuring. Discussing these things is challenging for me. I hope now you can better understand why I wanted to keep the circumstances of our meeting quiet. I wanted to thank you for not saying anything to Vladimir. I know that you said you wouldn't, but it is still a relief. I would like my contributions to Constellation to amount to more than violence. It wasn't a big deal, and now you owe me one. Or it was clearly important to you that I not say anything. Indeed it was. And now I hope you can see why. Thank you for talking this over with me. It is good to know that at least one member of Constellation understands me. I like her a lot better than Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. I mean, you're great and all, but... She's got more of a personality besides just constantly at ten. You're constantly at 10, Sarah, no matter what we do. Tone it down a notch, maybe. Bring it down to a seven. 
No more Starborn have shown up. Yet. Everyone seems more distant in the Lodge. I guess that is to be expected. Let's try personal questions. Yes, of course. And that's it. Okay, Walter, where'd you go, Walter? I was gonna talk to you. I wanna find out how you, there he is. How you doing, Walter? You forget, hmm? <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, I've been lost in thought for a bit. Ah, uh, well, looks like he's got nothing else to say. Vasco, how are you doing? Last time we saw you, Constellation you were Constellation has pieces. suffered losses before, although none quite so violently. I will be monitoring everyone's vitals for signs of continued trauma. Conversational protocols engaged. I am awaiting your query. That's it. Oh, man. Right, let's go get Barrett's stuff. I mean, it's my stuff. He was just carrying it for me. Just a comm relay? What happened to all the stuff? Oh, I must have loaded a different save. There's the disassembler coachman. There it is. There's Barrett's stuff. All that junk you're hauling is seriously slowing you down. Oh, well, we'll just forget. Yet, yeah, just be quiet. I know what I'm doing, crazy lady. Okay, let's deposit. Actually, we don't need to deposit scrap in here anymore. Because we've got a huge ship inventory now. So let's focus on organizing um, our weapons. Have you ever tried Aurora? Uh, uh, well, yeah, I, not, not in a long time, sweetheart. Not since you were born. What was it like? <laughs> terrible, terrible. It was terrible. That's awful. You stay away from that stuff, Cora. <laughs> Trust me. It's the worst. <laughs> Dad, have you ever done drugs? Oh, I mean, yeah. Uh, not since you were born. What was it like? Oh, it was awful. You should never, ever do it. Drugs are bad. They're bad, kid. Bad drugs. <laughs> President 99 says, let's be honest here, Ox. Any choice would have been better than Sarah to survive. Nobody likes her. I, you know, I had hope for Sarah when we first met, but after traveling with her, she's just so uptight about absolutely everything. But her personal story is kind of interesting, so I want to see where it ends. Really, the reason I ended up having to get rid of Barrett is I was concerned that a glitch had somehow ruined my affinity chances with him due to the strange interactions we had with him over the past couple of uh, broadcasts. So I didn't want to risk having to do a bunch of affinity work with him all over again, so... He was the easiest to let go. All right. Oh, no, no. We need to go to our safe. That's right. We are consolidating here. Laura says, uh, Drugs are bad. Okay. D drugs are bad. They're, they're bad drugs. Drugs are bad. Okay. Solstice. Pacifier, Orion, Arc Welder, Maelstrom, Drumbeat. I think we have a better Maelstrom now. Drumbeat, that also is a Maelstrom. But this is a unique weapon, so I'm going to keep it. Coachman, Rattler, Sidestar, Lawgiver, Disruptor, Tombstone, Eagle, that's an Eon, Cutlass, Knife, Another Maelstrom, Space Adept Maelstrom. Uh, do I have another Maelstrom? I, I'm, I think I'm carrying a better Maelstrom. Space Adept Pacifier. We have another pacifier here, don't we? 
Yeah, an elemental pacifier. So let's get rid of the space adept pacifier. Old earth pistol. Hunting rifle. I do love this hunting rifle. And an XM2311. Again, I love this weapon. Now, let's go to inventory. Weapons. Uh, that's a Grendel. Dagger. I don't have an Oz... Okay, let's store the dagger. Coachman. I've got a better one. Urban Eagle. Do I have another Urban Eagle? I don't think I do. I've got a side star, but that's not an Urban Eagle. Oh, there it is. Modified Urban Eagle. So then we can take that and place that one. Kraken. Orion. Grendel. All right, so we've got another Grendel up there. And we want to keep this one. Beowulf. Maelstrom. There we go. That's the calibrated Maelstrom I wanted to keep. Gallows Reach. That's a rare rifle. Let's deposit it because I don't want to use it, and yet it is unique. Uh, shoddy. Old Earth Shotgun. Let's store it um, and retrieve it later because it's powerful and it's great, but the current shotgun I have is really nice too. Novalite. I don't believe we have another Novalite. Do we? Other weapons. We don't. So let's store the Novalite. We can sell the Orion. Peacekeeper. That's a, that's a, a legendary X9 11 or something. Let's store that. Because I don't believe we have another one in there. X211 something or other. We don't. No, we do. No, that's that's a different one. All right. So back to weapons and rapid shot. That's the only one of those we have. But it's got fewer rounds, so let's store it. And we can sell the Maelstrom. We can sell the Pacifier because we have another Pacifier. I believe it's stored. As well as the Coachman. We don't. We've got another Coachman, so we, we, we don't need that. Pacifier, Razorback. This is the only one we have. Rescue Axe, Ripshank. Let's store that. And Vengeance. That's the Orion. All right, so just to make sure we don't have duplicates here. Pacifier, Arc Welder, Drumbeat, Unique Weapon, Coachman, Eon, Sidestar. That's the Unique Reach, Lawgiver, Disruptor, Shotgun, Tombstone, Novalite, Peacekeeper. Rapid shot. Okay. Now, spacesuits. I want to sell this one. Let's see. What am I storing here? Bounty Hunter. I can sell that. And trackers. Okay. Let's go back to... Why do I have this in there? It's a mine. Aid. I've got all this genetic material. Let's take it. Uh, notes. I can store my notes. I've got plenty of notes that I need to store for now. Uh, Colonel 87th says... Uh, not nice. I like Sarah. She is a light in the dark. Maybe I'll begin to appreciate her personality a little bit later. At the moment, I'm a little annoyed by her. Zarteth says, for me, it's because Sarah is voiced by Emily O'Brien. If she were voiced by Emily Mortimer or Claudia Black, though, a bit petty of me, but hey yo, I wasn't even thinking of the voice actors. Rachel says, the adoring fan would never junk shame or hate you. That's true, he wouldn't. Maybe I should be running with him. Zarteth says, I was unclear. I agree with you about Sarah. Okay. Thank you very much, Zarteth. That's a quest item. Okay. Peak performance. We'll store that. Quest item. Store that. Okay, then let's go back to notes. Do we have any duplicates? I don't have Bad People, Bad Jokes 3. I thought that's the one I read. There's Barrett's Personal Slates. All right, we've got two of the Delgad Directives. We can sell that one, sell that one, sell that one. Sell that one, sell that one. Sell that one. Whoa. I looted both by accident. Why did that happen?
Okay. Okay. Then, um... Alright, I'm storing my, slow my snow globes there. And that's it. Oh, and then I can take my resources out and put these back in the ship. Okay, so now I'm only storing weapons I want to keep. Notes I want to keep. Snow globes I want to keep. Everything else is on my inventory and we can start to sell. Just double checking real quick. Right. Now I'm not gonna be able to fast travel, so let's go sell and then move on. Oh, I'm encumbered. Got to wait for O2 to get back up there. And it's going to be a long slog back. All right, let's make sure we're tagging the right quest here. Uh, Unity, I don't want to do that. Late Bloomer, Media Sponge. I want to do the Vanguard quest, and let's see, that's going to be Eyewitness. Meet Hadrian in New Atlantis. But let's start by taking the train back to the Trade Authority. Oh, I do not get paid enough to deal with stuff like that. What are you talking about, lady? Aurora Ur says, do you need 19 weapons on your person? <laughs> no, you don't understand what I'm doing. I was, uh, I was clearing out my safe. I want to make sure that I have at least one of each weapon type in the game. And so I was going through my safe and comparing it with what I had on Barrett's inventory and on my inventory to make sure that if I wasn't going to use it, I at least had a copy of it in the safe. Any duplicates or items that I didn't need, I put back on my inventory so that I could sell it. I'm, that's what I'm doing now. I'm heading to a merchant to sell the weapons I don't need. So when, it, when we're all done, I should have like six or seven weapons on my inventory, not, you know, 19. <laughs> that's the goal here. Make it to the tram. Spaceport. Stack Sigdixix says, What's your favorite weapon aesthetic? Futuristic UC or wooden freestar? I like both. I think I prefer wooden Freestar or old Earth weapons, but there are some futuristic UC weapons oh, that are I've still really nice. I've always liked that statue. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mm. I wonder what the artist was trying to represent. Zach Taylor says, hey Ox, heads up. You can continue walking over encumbered. The health damage will stop around 10%. Then you can sleep on a ship to reheal. Cheers. Oh. Thank you. My partner and I. The scan is perfectly safe. Please keep moving. Security scanners, chemical sniffers. Hmm. The United Colonies sure isn't Stay taking any chances. Any. 
Okay. I have a legendary Grendel. I'm selling this. Is it really necessary for you to drag around all that gear? Sarah, I swear to God, just keep your yuppie shit. I have a legendary coachman, so I'm selling that. I have a legend, uh, rare equinox, I'll sell that. Oh no, he's out of money already? Thing I can help you with? Let me store some stuff uh, in the ship. Let's go to cargo. And go to my inventory because I have some resources that I can uh, put in here. Uh, resources. Store all resources. That's going to help. <clears throat> and let's uh, store the aid that I'm going to use. The orange. Okay. Still encumbered. Uh, let's sell the notes that we wanted to get rid of. Let's sell notes. These are all duplicates. Wow, we're really getting our money's worth here. Well, let's go to some of the merchants. We could go to Terra Brew. We could go to the Trade Authority. Need some work done? You will be scanned as you enter the city. Please keep moving. Okay, no bounty. Yes? No. I want to talk to a person, what? but no, not you. Just, ugh, go away. Could you please bother someone else? There's no one else to bother. Is there a merchant in here? Have a good one. Merchantile. If you don't see what you want, feel free to ask. Oh, please, take a look. Okay, let's go to sell. She's got almost 6,000. Let's go back to weapons. Don't need the Equinox. Don't need the Orion. Or the Maelstrom. Because I've got that one. Urban Eagle. Don't need the Orion. Maelstrom. Pacifier. Do I have another Urban Eagle? I think I do. Yeah, we'll sell the Urban Eagle. Okay, that's all my weapons. Let's go to spacesuits. Bots. <laughs> ah, it's the spacesuits that really get a lot of money for that. Let's go to notes. Okay, we're whittling through. Whittling through. Appreciate the business. Are we still encumbered? No, yay! Okay, let's go to the well. Let's sell at the trade authority. And then, finally, we can work on our quests. I've flown across most of the settled systems in all manners of spacecraft. And yet, I still get sick on the gnat. Art Pixel says vendors in the well. Thank you, Art Pixel.
I'm so excited to see Tony after work. Hey, you've been saying that the whole game. He hasn't met you after work yet. I think you've just been ghosted. Something you might be interested in. They are coming. Med Bay. Let's go to the Trade Authority. Tons Roost sure makes a great stay. I need their hand. Kay's house. There we go. Trade authority. Can we sell here at the electronics? No lawyering, okay? I don't, can't say I'll have what you need. Eh, ain't much. But take a look. All right, let's go to sell. Spacesuits. Bounty hunter. Ooh, not enough. Almost. Packs? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Take care. Let's see him. I help. Don't mind me. I flew my first Okay, first then. It was Come on was back. Still. Is this guy gonna do this really long walk to the back every time I try to, for to some reason, sell with But him? I held it together. This is quite, quite a thing. We gotta do this every time. Okay. At least with Mitch and Ralph, once we have him open the back for us, it stays open. All right. Take a look. Let's go to sell. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, he only takes weapons. He won't take armor. I can sell from the ship inventory? Why have I been dragging this around? Let's try the trade authority. People joke, say those our own zealots worship a snake. But let me tell you, the trade authority has access to even in the world. You won't well, find a better selection trade or more. Ah, ah, ah. All right, let's let's sell spacesuit. Packs. Apparel. Barrett's outfit. I got Barrett's outfit. Well, I can't sell that. It's unique. I can't sell it. Um, I think that's everything. He continues to flourish. Oh, you anything sick, else? Doesn't it? Okay. You guys still talking? Right. Let's continue with the quest. Jam and Cohen says you're on a planet with breathable atmosphere. So why are you expending oxygen like you're dependent on a spacesuit? I don't know. We don't ask questions. We How just play. Going? Here we go. The workup's in the cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC, it's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I am a clone of a man named Francois Sanon. 
What? One time fleet admiral of the UC during the colony war. Former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus. Woe to the defeated in Old Earth Latin. Oh no. A title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was he the was UC's killed. attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. Ve Victus. We learned from the display show uh, just before the simulator that Ve Victus was one of the three generals that they executed after the colony war. And she's his clone? Uh, we could say you're a clone of a man? How's that work? A non-trivial amount of gene editing. Clone, honestly, isn't even really the right term for our relationship, thanks to the amount of donor material that was required to bring me into this world. He and I are different on more than a few levels, but there's no denying the fact we're inextricably linked. Are there others from your program still out there? Other clones? I'm the last. A few of my siblings, they passed when we were young. Training accidents and the like. But most of the rest were deployed to the front lines during the colony war. And they never came back. Not a day goes by where I don't think about what the world would look like with them still in it. So, Clone Wars. Right. Uh, we could say this Ve Victus must have been an impressive commander for the UC to want to clone him, or it doesn't sound like they succeeded in securing that legacy. Well, we know what she's going to say to this, that he was executed, so they don't really honor him, but we'll try it. He would have happily told you he was one of the greats. Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. The man I was cloned from, my father was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective and UC. Military and civilians. Ooh. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. President 99 says, hope you remember the lore so far of this mission. It's important in some decisions you have to make. I think I do. I suppose I'll discover if I do or not when we get there. We could say, uh, what did your father do to merit being executed? He had his men open fire on civilian ships during the Battle of Cheyenne. A battle that he ultimately ended up losing anyway devastating the UC fleet and bringing the colony war to an ugly end for the UC. But he's also the one who ordered the bombing of the Londinian spaceport during their outbreak, mm. condemning countless lives. Both sides agreed the settled systems would be better without him. I'm going to have to learn more about this because from everything we've gathered so far, the Freestar Collective armed a bunch of civilian ships to meet the UC Navy out in space. I don't understand how a general of the UC can fight a war against civilian ships that have been armed by the military and not destroy civilian ships. Additionally, Londinian was overrun by the terror morphs, right? So they bombed the spaceport to make sure that no one could get in and out of Londinian, thereby containing the plague, so to speak. And while brutal and an extreme choice, was it the only one? Did he end up I, saving? I just thought you deserved to know. Did he, end up, did he end up saving countless lives by making that choice? We could say, wow, and I thought my family was messed up, or so you're using me to distract them. Great. Not sure I can blame them. This family of yours doesn't sound like they were paragons of virtue, or you're not your father. If the cabinet doesn't see that, it's their problem, not yours. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I just thought you deserved to know, considering how much you've done already. 
You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or, if you've got any last-minute business to attend to, now might be a good time. No telling how long the cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. Right, that's, that's her way of saying we're about to embark on a really long quest. Well, thankfully, I've spent the past several live streams doing other stuff, so now we can dedicate some time to this. Your eyes, they're red. Is that a result of the cloning process? But no, that means that she's a red devil, right? That's actually a souvenir from my time on Mars. The Red Devils unit I was a part of, they were founded by recruits who'd worked some of Mars' deepest mines. Folks used to adversity. The dust at those depths, it seeps into everything. The human eye included. Where the name Red Devils came from in the first place. It became an unwritten rite of passage that anyone wanting to enlist with the Devils had to do a stint in the mines before they could join up. The Devils were always talked about in such revered tones during my training, so as soon as I was old enough, I signed up. And the eyes were my parting gift. Are you willing to tell me any more about your father? I mean, we never spent a lot of time together. He was too busy being Fleet Admiral to deal with kids. I was raised by a pair of Guardians instead. Until his defeat during the Colony War, though, he was known as an extremely effective commander. Savvy. Perceptive. That mind opened a lot of doors for him. And for me, too. But Ve Victus, for all his ability, was heartless. Ruthless to a fault. In the end, that's what cost him his life. Rachel says you can save Barrett's outfit to display at your outpost. Can serve as a reminder to companions of what happens if they disapprove of your choices. <laughs> I'll make a bedroom for Sarah and put that display right outside her door just to keep her in line, you know. Okay, well, any suggestions on what I should say to the cabinet? Well, thinking about it more, I suspect there'd be value in sharing the fact that the Terramorph project was, well, a failure. There's no need to be afraid of this data being weaponized. Knowing that should calm some of the Cabinet's fears and make it easier for us to dispel any suspicions the other factions might have about our intentions. Was it a failure, though? It was effective. It was extremely effective in combat. We learned from Project Purity that the Red Devils and their Xenomorphs completely wiped out a free, stolony, a, a, a free colony's a Free Star Collective colony with a 93% casualty rate. Like, they killed almost everyone, and there were no casualties for the Red Devils. The only reason that it was a failure, quote-unquote, is because they made an agreement during the Treaty of Narian that both sides would remove, would stop using their weapons of mass destruction. The UC got rid of their Xeno Warfare Division. The Free Star Collective got rid of their mechs. So was it really a failure? So honestly, what are the risks of us accessing How this data? How long is the cabinet going to keep us waiting? I strain from the amount of reading I've got on the horizon if we succeed. The Terramore project never went anywhere. It couldn't. They are deadly creatures, but they aren't Xeno weapons. The cabinet not opening the archives is probably a bigger risk than them handing over the files. That data itself isn't dangerous. Which probably wouldn't be a bad point for us to bring up. Should the opportunity arise. That's true. We did learn from Project Pet Shop that they were able to control the minds of lesser creatures, um, but they couldn't ever fully control the terramorphs. So that data won't pose a threat because uh, won't pose a threat because it wasn't effective. Okay, let's go. Then I guess it's just a matter of The cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. That's us. Sounds like our cue. Here we go. Oh, here we go again. All right. Try to maintain her walking pace. But even while stealthing, I'm slower. Pardon me. Here on Vanguard Business? Come on, Sarah! 
You coming? Office of Interstellar Affairs. Ooh, politics. Okay, hello. <laughs> okay, hello. <laughs> Let's do a hard save here. A tingly says Gazuntite. Thank you, a tingly. Ah, welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Just following orders, or thanks. Uh, thanks don't keep my ship fueled, ma'am. Or Hadrian made it clear that addressing this issue required the utmost urgency. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well, precisely how urgent is what I hope we'll determine here today. So now... We have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. <clears throat> All right, well, I have fully specked out my persuasion, so let's see how well I can do. <clears throat> we're still trying to figure out what we are facing. We can't make an informed decision without data. We need the archival data to find a way to stop a possible terror morph apocalypse. I'm just here to talk about what happened. Adrian's the one with the grand plans. Remind me what's kept in the archives. <laughs> Probably don't want to ask that. Um, let's try to stop a terror morph apocalypse. That's quite the leap, Captain. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, terror morph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger Ooh. and her associates. All right, that's I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. Nice. I would also ask, how many deaths the cabinet requires to act. 50? 50,000? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties, Chief Essene has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this terramorph seem at all alarming to you? Cleansed in Fire says, Is that Charles Smith's voice from Red Dead Redemption 2? It's been so long since I've played that I don't know if I can pinpoint it. We could say, no, ma'am, nothing special to report. We could say, I only know what I was told. It's tissues matched ones from Londinian. We could say it wiped out a colony that never saw it coming. That's pretty alarming. Let's try this one. It's tissues did match those found at Londinian. Just taking her word for it as well, then. Hmm. So it would seem. So then, Captain... Given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? Okay, Madam President, if it were me, I wouldn't grant the request. The archives are sealed for a reason. Personally, I would wait. We don't yet have enough information. Yes, if the fear is the data being weaponized, the Terramorph program failed. The data's not dangerous. 
or if there's a chance that what happened on Tau City could happen elsewhere, we need to grant the request. And uh, this one is, a as she coached us at the beginning, this is the best example because we already know from um, Project Pet Shop that it was failed. They can use Xeno Warfare with many other alien creatures, but not the Terramorph. It doesn't matter if it can be weaponized or not. The archives need to remain sealed for now. There's no reason to rush into a decision of this magnitude. That? She I hadn't it. thought of that, Captain. She disliked- An excellent point indeed. The other powers would likely be much more inclined to work with us knowing that. Chief Diplomat. That? That point? Is a good one. <laughs> Very well, you have my agreement. I won over the everyone! The is lucky you were here today, Captain. Everyone except Sarah! You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... <gasps> what was that? What? Attention. Attention. An incident has occurred. What? Facility lockdown engaged. Incident? Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terror morphs. <laughs> Terror morphs. More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Damn it. They're here. Now. There. There must be another explanation. The creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin. Order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. Nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. Going to take a while to bring them in. Well, then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You too. We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're right, right ma'am. Feeling pretty silly right now. Behind. Let's get down there. Sarah. Oh, it should never be open for any reason, says Sarah. And now we're being attacked by Terra Mars. Colonel 87th says, quit paint, uh, painting on Sarah. She is wise beyond her years. Remember that this will affect the game. What does that mean, Colonel 87th? In a negative way, or? Let's go find out. Huh. Ah. Yeah, you're not needed here, guys. EM weapon. EM calibrated Orion. Incapacitate the attackers. What? Make you pay. Oh. Bad luck for you. Sarah. Loser. Lights out on that one. What is going on? What the heck just happened? Right. Well, I'm using an EM weapon to incapacitate them. Sarah's pulling out a Grendel and just going hog wild with her bullets. Okay, my quest marker is still sending me over here. Why? Why is it doing this? Could you? Jeez. 
Guess they run away. Right, well, I'm super confused. Uh... I, I incapacitated them. Great. Assess the situation. Thank you for what you did. We didn't... We didn't want to hurt them. The way those people were acting, I've seen this before. They were under the Terramorph's influence, weren't they? Oh! I, I don't know. They were down at the port, and they just started... screaming. We'd tried to restrain them, get them on the train to get them out of harm's way, but... But some of the other officers down there... We couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just... started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Fermonic projection. Some Terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. Mm. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're going to need to be real careful with our fire oh, and keep that EM weapon at the ready. If someone comes at me, I'm putting them down. Are you suggesting Terramorphs can control someone's mind? So does this mean I need to worry about you turning on me? Sounds like we need to hustle. Let's do control someone's mind. I'm not suggesting. It's documented behavior. The result of the projection, though, can vary wildly. Some folks just shrug it off. Others hallucinate. And some lose control altogether. They'll lash out at anyone around them, but still be aware while they're doing it. Those cases, you'll either need to knock them out with EM fire or free them by killing the Terramorph. Right. So does this mean I need to worry about you turning on me? I honestly was just wondering the same thing. But no, you don't need to worry about me. I've had a Terramorph try it on me before. I'm not susceptible. So we'll just have to make sure to watch out for each other down there. Sounds like we need a hustle. Let's do it. Nat's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them. Use the Nat to the spaceport. Okay, well that was my first time, I think, incapacitating somebody with um, non-deadly fire. Looks like we're going to have to hot bar this thing if we're going to be using it. Let's... Um, Make that number two. Rachel says hard save. What was that? Hard save. God, no time to waste, Captain. Stash the EM and pull some Evacuate firepower. Let's move. Let it be okay. It's not real. All citizens are required to proceed to the nearest shelter. You might back up. Don't just stand there. Good. Oh! 
Whoa, that was trippy. You them? Our experts? We've got the remaining creatures locked down on the landing pad, but we're barely holding our perimeter. They said you've done this before, huh? Well, you've got one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I... I can't risk them taking over any more of my men. Put those things down and do it fast. We... We'll hold them as best we can. Right. Optional speak to the fire team. Okay. Heard you might be looking for some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here. But we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. <clears throat> we'll handle this. You two stay put. Your call. We're on the line. Okay. They're just gonna make it more complicated. We'll do this one at a time. I'm cheesing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. Well, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, maybe we can try not cheesing it next time. Let's try and get a little uh, up close and personal. Quick save, though. Just in case this ends up, this ends up going bad for me. It's over. Thank God. Yeah, you like that. If these things reached the populated areas of the city, we would have had an absolute massacre on our hands. So it sounds pretty good to get what what what? Oh. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so it sounds pretty good getting that data now, huh? You know, the data that you thought we shouldn't get, right? Sarah, Sarah.
Yes, they weren't kidding about you two. The universe put the right people in the right place. Just remember who saved your tales. All in a day's work, Sergeant. You all held the line. You're the heroes here, not us. <laughs> That's it. Hmm. Certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. Okay, report to the President of the Bella on a more total turn. Kaido Fire says, ammo on the side table. Oh, I don't want to miss out on ammo. Side, oh yes. Yes, yes. Yes, please. Ooh. I would have missed this. <clears throat> Man, I call myself a content creator. I would have missed all of this. Any other side tables? No. Gotta restock my supplies. Okay, situation dealt with. Thank you, gentlemen. Let your people all know how much we owe them today. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there you are. I believe we have some things we should discuss. The next Great. time Terror Morphs rear their ugly heads, the UC is going to be ready. Captain? Hadrian? It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs will consider them validated. Hear that, Sarah? Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> I take my gratitude in credits, real estate, or luxury goods. <laughs> it would be so fun to just do a selfish, narcissistic playthrough. Better late than never, I suppose. Agreed. Thank you. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. Hey. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. I'm a diplomat now. The cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. Me? 
I'm so honored. <clears throat> Me? Why not send a diplomat? Someone trained for this sort of thing. The cabinet wants progress and wants it quickly. You're already far more familiar with the situation than any diplomat would be. There's also no diplomat alive that can claim they helped keep a cadre of terramorphs off the embassy doorsteps. The cabinet was unanimous. They want you. Oh. Tell me what I'm getting first and I'll consider it. I can't be your representative. I'm just some vanguard nobody. If you're sure that's the wisest course of action. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast track your citizenship upon collection of the data. Oh! So, will you help us? So how I performed in the simulated dogfight doesn't actually matter. If I continue with the quest, I get fast-tracked citizenship. And does that mean I get a free house at New Atlantis? Hey. Uh, and what do I get for being a, U a UC citizen? It has its perks. Only citizens can purchase property in the city. We also pay reduced prices on most goods and services across the UC. There's also a credit disbursement when you first join. Help get you on your feet. But above all, you'd become a dedicated part of the greatest faction in the galaxy. If you're willing to help us, we can open that door. You can count on me, ma'am. I'm glad to hear it. Now, we of course won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We are dismissed. Those creatures killed UC citizens. They're not killing anyone. I'm gonna go check in with Chief Engineer Kulkarni. Start getting a plan together for that data. All right. Now we talk to Deputy McIntyre. New mission, friends like these. Talk to Deputy McIntyre. We didn't get where we are by sitting on our laurels. Our laurels, in fact, became uninhabitable a long time ago. Helps to remember that. <laughs> uninhabitable laurels, that's interesting. Wait, wait, so Just the rest- that up. Spaceport has anti-Xeno protocols. How the hell does a whole herd of Terramors touch down undetected? Maybe they're mutated from humans already here? So the rest of that phrase is, uh, with friends like these who needs enemies, does that mean they're not really friends? Chief Yassin, these orders, a vanguard captain, you, yes, sir. I'll make sure they get what they require. Hmm, she doesn't seem too thrilled with this. With friends like these indeed. All right, McIntyre. That must make you my vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassin's second in command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the cabinet. Chief Yassin wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor, accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the archives. You do know what the archives are, correct? I do, and it's interesting that every time we get to this point in the game, they're uh, eager to remind us. We could say, let's pretend that I don't have the slightest idea, or we can say they're repositories for all the banned data from the Colony War. Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So... Then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Yep, 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 yep. Access to the archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency and requires a one-time use code from each of the three armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both, and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. Mm. What can you tell me about these codes? Can we forge them? <laughs> Am I gonna get... She's gonna chew me out for that. No. 
Each is a strip of several million random numbers generated on the fly based on biometric keys kept by each of the ambassadors on their person at all times. They're impossible to create without those keys, and those keys stay with the ambassadors, meaning we're accessing nothing if we can't get them on our side. It sure doesn't sound easy. No problem. I'm just going to need some electrodes, a tooth extractor, and some sodium pentothal. <laughs> You'd think they'd be clamoring to help after the spaceport attack. So we're suggesting here that we torture, torture them to get the codes out of them. That's, that's hilarious. All right. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't or can't work with us. Now... I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Uh... Let's try Freestar. We've worked with them already. Ah, the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. If Sam is any example of how stubborn the Freestar people can be, then I can imagine how difficult it must be dealing with this Ambassador. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But <laughs> my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Hmm. I think you're underestimating how delightful I am. Oh, I love that. No one can be that stubborn. New Atlantis was just attacked. Or all right. Tell me about these other tools then. Let's, let's try, um, how delightful I am. Huh. Well, if that's the case, I'll wait to be pleasantly surprised. But we do have one item up our sleeve. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living oh, quarters. blackmail! Which okay! Which I suspect you can use to your advantage. <laughs> blackmail! But of getting course. caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. <laughs> so... If you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. What can you tell me about this staff member? Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe, bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. <laughs> any other things I should avoid doing inside the Embassy? Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. Okay. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over, but I can't make any promises. That's all the info I need for the moment, Ambassador Wiggler. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up. You're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassine wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Credits. FC Embassy security card added. <clears throat> all right, so credits to bribe. Okay. Well, uh, tell me about Ambassador Balmore of House Varun. Ambassador Balmore's a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Why? What's wrong with House Varun? Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. 
How's Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the great serpent in the sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about 70 years back, House Faroon did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. Hmm. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place, why they were included in the armistice negotiations. But then, without warning, they left, leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the ambassador and his duty under the armistice. Send them back to the serpent in the sky. All right, uh, no argument here. House Varun seems like nothing but a bunch of madmen. I'm sure he can be reasoned with. House Varun are people just like us. <clears throat> that actually sounds pretty promising. Well, let's try the people just like us. Well said. There's no reason to assume they're any worse than us, despite their cultural beliefs. She liked it, okay. Of course. Uh, but there is... Another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmor is actually still alive. Oh. Like his public appearances were always rare. But it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. What? Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. Kindly but firmly? What do I do if he's dead? Then you search the embassy for his biometric key, collect your code piece, and we'll go about notifying his next of kin. If we can ever find them. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. Wait, has no one actually been inside the embassy? The embassy is still legally House Varun's sovereign territory, so we're not technically permitted inside. We've snuck in the occasional spy, of course. Of course. But the ambassador has proven more... evasive than you'd expect for a man of his age. But mm. we're quite sure he hasn't left the city. The man stands out. Oh, exactly how. What kind of life signs did you detect in the embassy? The Varun delegation brought more than a few of their native flora with them when they set up in the embassy. Okay. It seems those plants have been allowed to flourish, making it hard for us to verify what's flora and What's Ambassador? Vault 22. Sounds interesting. Here's hoping we're not chasing a corpse, or I'll track him down. I have no doubt. Now, the Embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here. This device should get you all the way down to the Embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning... We received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Oh, now, great. if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. Okay, friends like these. Well, we start with the Freestar Collective. Nova Galactic Manual 3 permanently reduces fuel needed for a grab jump by an additional 1%. Hey, all right. Perk Magazine. Pardon? Functionary Gershon's computer requires key. Hmm. Functionary Gershon. Excuse me. I have a feeling I'll be back here later. Origin of species. Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. Masked Hello. functionary. Hmm. Must be Gershon's office? No, that was uh, where his computer was. I wonder whose office this is. Right. Security monitoring on premises. We've got a meeting room here.
Yes, what? Yes. Okay. Captain, can I help you? Nope. Okay, the Free Star Collective Embassy. Maybe we should stop for a moment at the memorial. You know, to pay our respects. Okay, memorial. Where's the memorial? Is this the memorial? All right, hard save. Hard to believe it's been two decades since we were at war with the Collective, when it seems like only yesterday. Welcome to the Free Star Embassy. Is there something I can help you with? Uh... Oh. This is a quest we picked up in my very first episode. One of your representatives forgot his diplomatic visa. You can't forget what you don't need. Diplomatic visas haven't been in use since the colony war. No, this sounds to me like a guard bought a red marker and colored some tape. I'll make a call to Sergeant Yumi and see if I can't get this squared away. Thanks for the tip. Okay, that's all we had to do. Great. Anything else? Don't you worry. I'll have our people go and fetch the representative. Great. You are a visitor? You'll find the ambassador in her office. Go on through. Bustavo Plays says, turn on that ox riz with the ambassador. That's right, I'm gonna be as charming as I can be. I'm gonna wear a cowboy hat and put on some chaps. It's good hey. to be back at the embassy. There he is. Most times, entry to New Atlantis is seamless, but on occasion, you have officers who want to settle old grievances. Visitors are only allowed in the lobby, offices... I'm going to be up front with you. That means you. I'm not happy visiting anything related to the Freestar Collective. But you lead, and I'll follow. What do you actually like, Sarah? You're very vocal about the things you don't like. You're vocal about what display... What do you actually like in this life? Do you like anything? Do you at least like coffee? I don't think we can be friends if you don't like coffee. If you start complaining when we go to Terra Brew, that's it. We're done. Master locked vent. Charity in a Godless Universe Part 4. That is a brand new book, but I'd have to steal it. I can't steal anything in the Freestar Collective's office. Okay, well, well, we'll explore it after we talk with her. Oh, wrong door. My bad. Terramorphs? As in more than one? All that security and they still can't protect their own spaceport. The UC never fails to disappoint. I just wish I hadn't received the news from an SSNN broadcast. We have a strategic advantage to maintain, Mr. Long. Of course, ma'am. Uh... I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. There's Cameron. Uh, excuse me. Are you supposed to be in here? No, no, I'm gonna talk to Cameron first. Sounds like he, uh, might not like his job so much. Hey there, Cameron. That woman is an absolute... Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, what? You're the Vanguard captain, right? You know, I was about to board the Nat to the spaceport when the alarm triggered. Sounds like I got real lucky. 
And like I've got you to thank for things not being a lot uglier. King Onyx says, Sarah is the strong of this game, clearly. Yeah, she dislikes everything. For those who don't know, Strong in Fallout 4 is a super mutant who disliked everything you did, of course, because he's a super mutant and he can't relate. We could say I have a lot of respect for this city and its residents, unlike some people around here. We could say just doing my duty or you did get lucky. It was a war zone down there. I'll say just doing my duty. Doubt the Vanguard would have a lot of recruits if that were the job description. But I'll take your point. But, but look, they said you were coming here on official business. The Ambassador likes to handle all that personally, even if she does have trained diplomats here to help her. And I don't want to get shipped back to Aquila City, so you should probably go speak to her. <clears> hmm. <throat> I'll go check in with her, thanks. Or we could lie and say we're aware of your skills, Mr. Long. It's why the UC sent me to speak with you. Or sounds like you could be doing more, a lot more, like working with me. Let's try that. You want to work with me? I. Why don't we talk somewhere uh, a bit more private? Yeah. Okay, let's follow Cameron. I'll be back, lady. We're going somewhere private. Just to talk. Nothing creepy, just talk. So you want me to work with you, but why now? Why me? We could lie and say your file clearly states you're a top-notch diplomat. The UC wants the best working for them. I'm not at liberty to say this came from the very top. We need help preventing more terror morph attacks, and we're not expecting the ambassador's support. Let's, let's be honest and upfront with him. He seems like a guy who would really appreciate that. No, I, I think that's a pretty safe assumption. And no other city should have to go through what happened here. So then, uh, what would you need from me? Can you get me access to the archival code machine? I need to get access to her quarters without being seen. I need you to get me the ambassador's archival access code. Um... This is tricky. Uh, I don't really know which one of these we need the most. Let's try quarters. Her quarters. Huh. Well, that's doable. And you and the UC will be providing me with what for my services? A thousand credits. <clears throat> we could say, you know what? I need to clear something with my superiors. I'll be right back. Or we could lie and say the diplomatic office will bring you on as an operative. Put your real talents to use. Let's try a thousand credits. Wait. I thought you were looking to hire me. Oh, I'm not taking a bribe. Okay. Well, then we can lie and say that we'll bring him on as an operative. Really? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh... You've got yourself a deal. Okay, so there's a utility corridor that leads to the ambassador's quarters, which you can access through the main conference room. Here, the key. Whatever you do, don't let the guard see you entering or exiting the utility section, or you're going to be in serious hot water. I'll, uh, I'll keep an ear out for more instructions from the UC. Okay. <clears throat> Well, before we start doing all of that, let's see what happens if we talk to her. This building is Freestar Sovereign Territory. So in here, we're the law. Let's take some chems here. Let's try uh, Hippolyta. I'm sorry. Do you have an appointment? Well, let's see. You seem like a lady who wants to stop more Terramorph attacks. Well, have I got a deal for you. <laughs> Captain Oxhorn, UC Vanguard, you and I need to talk, Ambassador. Or I'm here on behalf of the United Colonies. We need the Freestar Collective's help. 
Let's try that. Ah, you're the one McIntyre called about. The eyewitness. She said you were at the spaceport. You have my thanks for what you did down there, truly. Saved many lives. Now, she also mentioned that, and maybe it was just a bad connection, that now the UC wants Terramorph data from the Armistice Archives, some of the most highly guarded information in the galaxy, in order to protect us all. I can only presume you're here to tell me I misheard her and that they didn't send you, local hero, to futilely beg on their behalf. <laughs> tell me I've got that right. <clears throat> um... <laughs> We could say, nope, they sent me to beg. Please, please, pretty, pretty, please. Or you need to help us, otherwise any more deaths are on your hands. Or you heard correctly, we need access to the archives. Hmm. <laughs> okay, let's try the first one. Hmm, I was afraid of that. Let me be frank, Captain. The answer is no. That information is there because it is dangerous. I will not be the one responsible for its release. Now, why don't you quit wasting my time and yours and go? Fine. I'll just figure this out some other way. Are you serious? There was just an attack on the city. You're really not going to help us? Or we can pass a persuade check to say, please, Ambassador, just listen to what I have to say. You're really going to push this? All right. I will give you one chance, one, to convince me. Understood. Thank you, Ambassador. Just hear me out. I'm listening. And this is a very difficult one. Just as difficult as, as it was to convince Hank not to kill us. We've got three turns. Well, we could try to pass a red one with maxed out persuasion and Hippolyta to say, be the person the galaxy needs, Ambassador. There's a lot of scared people out there right now. And I could do something about it. We only need three more. And this is easy. The Terramorph Xeno Weapons Project was a failure. That knowledge isn't dangerous. You know that for sure. That is interesting. Well, Captain, you, you make some good points. But if I'm really granting you access, I'm gonna need the following concessions. Your access will be limited. You can only take out the items related to stopping these Terramorphs. The monitors will make sure of it. You go in once. You get everything you need on your trip, and never again. And all research done with the data will be monitored. If this data is being used to save the galaxy, the galaxy needs to be involved in the oversight. Freestar scientists will watch your people like hawks. So, do we have an agreement? It sounds fair to me. We could say, uh, I think I need to speak to Deputy Mc McIntyre first. That's way too much. We're agreed. Honestly, it doesn't sound that unreasonable. She wants to monitor to make sure I only access the data that I'm saying I'm going to access, and they want to be involved in the process. They want me to play diplomat. I'm going to exercise my role as diplomat and say agreed. Excellent. Follow me. I'm sorry, did I get in your way? Nope, you're just having a... Wow, just... Oh, my. Time for a two-step. It's the Freestar Collective. We're doing a hoedown here. I don't know, Cotton Eye Joe, don't know the lyrics, Cotton Eye Joe, something, something, Cotton Eye Joe, that's all I know, it's Cotton Eye Joe. Come on, do something, you crazy lady! Yeah. Move, move, move. This worked when I wanted to steal the whiskey, come on. Yeah! Oh, that was exhausting. Sounds like it was a real mess down at the spaceport.
They tell me it should only take a moment. And there. Here, I'll reach out to Deputy McIntyre. We'll coordinate the necessary oversights. Sounds to unlikely good. allies, I guess. Yeah, to unlikely allies. All right, I'm feeling good about all of this. This was really nice. Trust must be earned. So we'll let the UC earn it. No, yeah, she wasn't so bad. Not so bad. I mean, I did have to pass a very difficult persuasion check. Had I not, perhaps she would have been, you know, a little bit worse. Right, let's look around a little bit. They're not... Let's... <laughs> Let's do a hard save before we piss people off by looking around. Let's uh, let's look around a little bit and see what they got here. All right, food. I can't steal any of this. So I'm gonna get in trouble. Restart collective space and all that. Synth foam container. I just wish I could grab one of the books. This is the tape I was talking about, the vacuum tape. I looted a bunch of that in my first broadcast and it didn't count as adhesive. So annoying. Okay. Probably can't walk in here again. So, we won't. What's in here? Oh, it's Clayton's room. Ooh, we got a safe cred stick. Yeah. He's sleeping, but... Well, Cameron, sorry. You're gonna continue to live out your life here as a servant to this this lady. Ground crew pack. All right. Let's see what's upstairs. Ah. Oh. Okay, so if we wanted to uh, sneak down that way. War of the Worlds, we read that. Can I can I come in here? Warning, be on, employees only beyond this point. Sorry, everyone's a little on edge after the attack. Okay. Wait, something's wrong. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 my bad. My bad. My bad. Going out? Right. I'm currently trespassing. Residents will become hostile if I stay. Not if they can't see me. Ooh, exterminators, professional, calibrated. Sarah, keep the door closed. I'm stealthing here. Sarah, stop. Just get in. Get in. Opening the door, Sarah. Do you know how this works? Gunslinger's Guide 5. All right, permanently reload and draw Laredo weapons. 5% faster. Contraband cash. I'm not gonna steal anything if I can help it. I love, oh, this one is not set to owned. I'll take that. Uh, that is set to own, so I can't take that. Set to own. Right. Is that? Nope, nope, you're hearing something. It's... There's no hey, one in here. You're in a restricted zone. I'm sorry. You, you're in violation of embassy regs. You're coming with me. Ah, oh, all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry, I'll leave. Good. And you can bet the UC is going to hear about this. Crap. Sarah, this is what you get for constantly... I don't appreciate being thrown in prison for your mistakes. Sarah... You kept the door open! Had you come in when I told you to! Jeez! Alright, we're gonna... <laughs> we're gonna walk in, loot the magazine, and walk out. It's gonna be fast. Did I not make a quick save there? Oh, crap. I did. No, I did a hard save there. There we go. Yep, 
Yeah, she's coming back up. All right. You're allowed three places, conference room, lobby, or the ambassador's office. You set foot anywhere else, there's gonna be problems. Oh, look at that, I was quick. I was quick and I got what I needed. I got it, yeah! No bounty on me. Okay, Ooh That's the door he gave me a key to. Okay, I think I got what I needed. I wish I could loot this book. Charity and a Godless Universe, part four. Oh, well, I'm sure I'll find another one somewhere else. All right, we, we've done good. Sarah says she has something for me when I have a moment. All right. Can I help? Um, do you have anything interesting for me, Sarah? Fishing for a handout, eh? <laughs> you told me. You said you had something for me. I'm not fishing for a handout. Okay. Now we need to go to House Varun. I'm really excited about this because we haven't interacted with very many House Varun members. Sorry, but I need sign off from the Interstellar Affairs office before I can set foot in there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's plumbing, not a peace treaty. It could cause an incident. It could mean my job, sir. <sighs> Fine. I'll begin the process. Wouldn't want to withhold a chance for more red tape from the great UC. Man, the animosity runs deep between these two factions. Art Pixel says if you want to stealth, tell yes. companions to wait some time. It's like, I like the terrible like uniform so much. When someone insults you, just to wear gosh. When you want to just okay. get the shit out of them sometimes, uh, but you don't. <laughs> well, not quite what I was thinking, but that's actually a great example, Marcus. The man in the story was cruel. Do you know why he was cruel? You must feel what he feels. Understand his pain. Accept it. And deliver it not back upon him. Empathy. You mean empathy. <laughs> but you say it like it's easy. Like anyone can... just... love a terrible person who has been terrible to them. Yeah. Why even bother? I mean, isn't the cycle of humanity peace and war back and forth, like forever? Seems kind of pointless to try so hard for something that won't last. Nothing ever really changes. Well, it's not easy, no, but necessary. Because you see, everything has changed. God has given us the intelligence, the ingenuity to reach into the stars, to travel his path, to truly find him. But we can't do it alone. The only way is through unity. Ah, yes, Andreas. Yes, unity. Well, I'm sure you all have other things to do. Thank you for taking the time to stop and talk with me. Okay, so that's the guy we need to see to advance the primary uh, constellation plot. Sadly, there was another conversation going on right here that we triggered by walking by and they overlapped, so we missed out on that. And uh, was that a spaceship landing or crashing? It sounded really loud. I'm going to assume landing. Anyway, let's go talk to House Faroon. <clears throat> I was reading Art Pixel's comment. He says, if you want to stealth, tell companions to wait somewhere. It's a They're shame House Faroon abandoned their embassy. Mm, I bet we could have learned a lot from one another. They are all rough for stealth. There's also a power that helps for stealing things. Okay, thank you, Art Pixel. I'll bear that in mind. Then let Ryujin Industries help you get there. Fill out an application today to become part of the... So that's House Varun Embassy. And it does look overgrown. That's the side door. Okay, hold on. Sarah said something right outside the main door to House Varun. I want to see if it's even accessible. Keep 
your nose clean. Last thing I want is to charge you for DP. Wow. It's blocked off. This is the main door to House of Varun. Do not enter. Can't even access the door. And they blocked it off with a bunch of barricades. House Varun Embassy is really not in business, is it? Ryujin Industries is looking for the young friends. Going upstairs real quick. See what we can find. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Then we got a good view. Hmm. Where, where, what's that? where are you going, sir? wants to parkour a little bit. All right, we can climb on all this stuff. That's cool. Well, let's focus. Varun Embassy Entrance Override. Do a hard save. She said something about automated security. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This place is just in ruin. <clears throat> Where is House Varun? Where is the ambassador? Is he still here? There's the front door. Hey. We need to go to the embassy below. Let's try lobby second floor. If there's anything up here. Nothing. A big fat nilch. Embassy. What was that? Well, this isn't what I expected at all. Quiet! It appears the flora they were using as decor has overgrown the entire embassy. I, anyone can see that, Sarah. I was listening to the intercom. Just... All right, from what I gathered, it said follow the voice. Approach the intercom. All right. Huge mess. An inaccessible door. Lobby security computer. All right, all, all top. All. Now that's the only place that'll fit, which means this isn't going to work. So we can try this. There we go.
We can activate the turrets or update friend foe settings. Oh my gosh, this is turret control. Note, be sure to carefully read the user manual, blah, blah, blah. Recalibrate friend foe settings or remove combat inhibitors. Let's recalibrate friend foe settings in case somebody else turns them on. Recalibrated to protect the current user. Now we could activate them, but let's not do that just yet. Okay, restore power, but beware defenses. At least he's trying to save me. Thankfully, I hacked the terminal, so we should be okay. Hmm. Continue deeper into the embassy. Ooh, what is all that? I've never seen a tree like this before in my entire life. It'd actually be more fascinating if its branches weren't blocking our way. I'm more worried about the blue spores. Ah! What? What is that? A robot Model A. I didn't stock up on junk. Sarah, I swear to God. Dear God. All right. Okay, uh... Turrets are inactive. Good. All right, I'm coming, buddy. I'll find you, one second. Living Quarters Local Systems Computer. Unlock Advanced. Bottom. All. All. Bottom. 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 Well, clearly that means this needs to be used. Here. And here. All right. Nope. Yep. Nope. Or yep. Yep. Okay. There we go. Robot control interface. Update friend foe settings. We'll recalibrate uh, recalibrate to current user. All right, so now the robots should not attack us. Varun Scripture 6. Permanently increases sneak bonus by an additional 1% and melee sneak attack damage by an additional 5%. Yeah. Hi. Hi. 
Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah, don't mind me. Lots of Veyrune robots, they look cool. Nova Blast Disruptor. I've got one of those back in my safe. Okay, I'm coming. Everybody. Whoa, 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 hey, I did the, I did the turrets. I did the turrets. Maybe it only did the turrets at the beginning. Okay, quest marker is sending us that way. I'm really concerned with all these spores. Why are they attacking now? I don't understand why the robots and the turrets are hacking now. Conference room security computer advanced. All right, bottom, top. Bottom or top, bottom or top, bottom or top, bottom or top. Right, so that's gonna be for the bottom only, so that goes there. All right, so we got that one sorted, which means we need uh, this one. And that means we need this one. Hey, security challenge done. Picks uh, 30 locks. Turret control interface, no signal. Okay. Ooh, Those I were the turrets the I destroyed. There was worth all of the trouble. She doesn't even like it when I hack computers. Okay. So now we need to go upstairs. So let's go downstairs. Purges the body of addictions. Nice. A junk flush. Chunks cheese steak. Mmm. Hey. Cheesesteak, mounting on a cheesesteak, mounting on a cheesesteak. Switch upstairs, hurry, all right, so then we'll come back down here.
I'm coming. Calibrated Nova Light. I already have a Nova Light, don't I? But this is calibrated. That means it's higher quality. I'll take it for now and compare it with the one I have back at base. God, I can't even see. Well, I suppose they're not going to need it anymore. There was one more turret. Headed to the basement, caution, it said. I wish we could eat food without putting it in our interface first, like we can in Fallout 76. That was a really good feature. Another calibrated Nova light. Plushy Parsh Poop. And I'm encumbered, of course I am. Oops, didn't mean to take that, oh well. Hey, Paramore. Beware demons? Did he mean beware terramorphs? Is Are there terramorphs down there and he thinks they're demons? Let's do a hard save. Com room security computer. Okay, top. That's the only spot. Bottom. 
None. None. Top. That's the only spot. Top or bottom. Nope, that works too. Okay, update, friend foe settings, recalibrate. There we go. Make sure you check every entry. There might be some embedded data we could use to our advantage. Advanced. Hold on. I'm nearly there. Is that where I need to go? But that's an advanced lock. They wouldn't hide a quest thing behind an advanced lock, would they? Well, there's this other door over here. That's also advanced. Okay, both. 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 Bottom. Top. Both. Okay, we got overlap there. We've got overlap there. Okay, so we need uh, four if we use that one. We need three if we use this one. But that doesn't fit there. So that's not going to work. And that's not going to work. Unless we use... Oh, that doesn't work. But we've got overlap there. Oh, that doesn't work. Okay, let's try that. It's going to give us four left if we do this, and then, nope, that won't work. Yeah. No, it won't work. Overlap, overlap, no overlap. Two, two, three. Okay, I'm done. This was that same door. Okay. Okay, back to the basement. Eliminate guardians and demons in the basement. Bring it 
on. All right, that was it. Eliminate the robots. Might as well take what we can. Requires key. Oh, there he is. All right, we'll talk to him in a second. <clears throat> Why was he talking in such a creepy manner as if he had belabored breathing or something? Okay, quick save. So, what seems punishment becomes providence. <laughs> A reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss. Well, we found him, and he appears to be okay. And all of this is set to owned. This is where he's been holed up. Ambassador Kasirk Balmor. Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the Venom Tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? <laughs> Tell me, though. What is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack. Uh, then the embassy was struck with a power surge and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? <clears throat> Did you say that the thing pouring out clouds upstairs is called a venom tree? Is it poisonous? Harmless spores, you have my word, but uh, hard to navigate. Hence why I was guiding you through the intercoms to restore the environmental controls. <laughs> and release me. It is the sap of the tree that gives it its... Well, <laughs> perhaps not a topic for this exact moment. But I must know of the rest of the city. Does it still stand? Is that what happened here? A power surge? I take it you didn't have such an experience where you were then, hmm? Yes, the entire embassy was thrown into lockdown, trapping me in my quarters, disabling the Venom Tree's filters, and arming the defenses. A disconcerting experience, to say the least. Was the rest of the city spared? Everywhere in the city is in better shape than this dump. The spaceport is in rough shape, but not much else was damaged. <sighs> is that right, huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. Who else could just waltz through my door, hmm? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Ah, an archive code. So the UC requires information, then. On terror morphs, presumably, hmm? Do I see this all clearly? <laughs> this guy is pretty good at deduction. We could say bingo! Hand over your code so I can get out of this place. We are going to ensure something like this never happens again. And we need your code to do it. Or correct, we're going to use the data in the archives to better understand and stop these attacks. The preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks, there is logic there. But if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy. With 
little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just carnage. The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. I mean, I, I'm starting to like this guy. Uh, he's spouting wisdom here. Maybe I should join House Varun. <laughs> um, uh, we could try a, a devil's advocate here and say knowledge can't be evil. What about the knowledge of, say, gunpowder? <sighs> a fine counterexample. Responsible for the deaths of millions on ancient Earth. And uh, fireworks. fireworks? Absolutely capable of being put to violence, but not evil in itself. And here you are with a similar conundrum. I might be willing to support you if I knew I would not be tarnishing the legacy of House Varun by doing so. You're just an old man in a basement. <laughs> You don't get to tell me what to do, Ambassador. That is an impossible request. I can't know exactly how this will all play out. Or we could say you have my word. I will make sure it is used for good. I mean, we can do everything within our power. It's a very reasonable request. I'm going to say yeah. As the chair of Constellation, I take personal responsibility in vouching for this man's integrity. He'll keep his word. Oh, I, who well, asked then, you? I shall not fear. Please, follow me. She's going to make sure that I keep my word? Really? Well, thanks, Mom. God. <sighs> Let's hope it still works. And there. Let it be used for good. Why are you bothering to carry all that junk? I swear to God, oh, I swear to God. I will not have House Varun be known only for slaughter. The Great Serpent, that's your god, right? The Great Serpent is so much more than a god. It is fate itself. When our founder, Jinan Varun, left the United Colonies 140 years ago for distant stars, it was the Serpent that compelled him to found his now great house. The Serpent made us who we are today. Its voice speaks to us shepherding us through the dark and infuses our lives with the meaning the universe so often fails to provide. What's it like being from House Varun in New Atlantis? It was tolerable, even pleasant, when my brethren were here in the embassy with me. We remade this place as best we could into a home we all would recognize. Our native flora, our iconography, our connection to the Serpent, they came with us. With my brethren gone, it has been trying. But the Great Serpent has always provided me a path in my darkest moments. Tony J says, one of these days, Sarah, one of these days, bang, boom, straight to the moon, and I'll leave you there. Yes, that's a great idea. When I start building my colonies, I'm gonna build a colony on the moon, and I'm going to station Sarah there and leave her there. Why'd you stay behind? House Varun committed itself to the armistice. This was said at the time to be the desire of the Great Serpent, and I do not believe the Serpent decides such things on a whim. So, when my brethren left, I remained, honoring the Serpent's will as I saw fit, as is the right of all his followers. You know, if I was this guy, and I really wanted to rehabilitate the reputation of House Varun in the eyes of New Atlantis and the Free Star Collective, I wouldn't stay holed up in my embassy. I would go out every day 
eat at the local cafes, drink coffee at the local coffee shops, chat with people, give advice, have conversations, get to know people, become a personality so that when people think of House of Varun, they think of me and they think of positive things. Staying holed up in the embassy doesn't do anyone any good. So why did the rest of the embassy staff leave? Where did they go? The affairs of House Varun are our own. They left. That is all there is to be said on the subject. Hey, I can take all of this. Ablative Advanced Navigator Pack, credits, ammunition, and resources. Thank you, Ambassador. Sob76 says he was. Or no, no, he says he was recalled. I think he's on house arrest. And World says he was. He's been trapped for years. I know he's been trapped for a time, but um, uh, UC told us that even beforehand he was rarely seen oh that would be stealing looting the chest is not stealing but that would be stealing ah I could steal from a master lock safe antique VHS love it okay what's that Varum storeroom key card it's not set to owned Where's the storeroom? Okay, where is the storeroom? There it is. Hey. Oh, yeah. Mannequin. Quick save. Oh. It's a Varun spacesuit. It's not that good. It's worth 10,000 credits, though. Julian Z says, Ox missed my super chat. I'm, I'm getting to it. I see it here. He says, Ox, I can't wait till you do a companion profile on Sarah. It's going to be the most passive aggressive video ever. <laughs> Lol, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Thank you for that one. Nova Blast Disruptor. I believe we have one of those already. And it's uh, rare. What is that? High tensile spit iron? And a master locked safe. Oh dear God, this had better be worth it. Middle. Easy. Top or bottom? That would sort the top. Bottom. Yes. Yes. Two places where that would work. Three places where that would work. Bottom. I don't worry about that when I get there. Yes, that would work. Let's try middle. Would work there. There you go, middle. It would work there. Right. Let's risk it. Okay, now to see if we actually have something to work with here. Yes? No. Overlap. Yes. No, overlap. <clears throat> so we might not be able to use that.
No, 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 yes. No, yes. So these are the only two slots that'll work. have overlap. So it's that or that. Let's try an auto slot. Okay. Tesla modified calibrated regulator, 68 physical damage, 18 fire rate, bashing deals double damage when gun bashing, hitman 15% damage while aiming, Tesla, rounds will sometimes emit electricity where they land that damages and slows nearby targets. With a reflex sight and armor piercing rounds, Definitely hey. know your way around a lock. Gustavo Plays says, Ox, you're asking someone to go outside where there's other people and sunshine? I know, it's a tall order. It's a lot of junk out here. Okay. Let's get out of here. We got what we came for. Oh, huh. Take me that one. Okay, that's House Varun. We got a lot of junk to get rid of. obnoxious. Let's 
go to the spaceport and take care of some of this stuff. Garrett says there's a book in Aquila City that pays extra for original Earth copies of books. Oh, I didn't know that. That's great. I want to join you next. Hey, it's you. <laughs> Fancy seeing you. I was hoping to run into you eventually. Oh! I've got something for you. She's from the colony ship, right? <laughs> I was getting adoring fan um, moments there. Um, we could say credits, I hope. You still owe me for what I did for you. Or we could say, I think I've got an idea of what it is. Or you didn't have to get me anything. Or I can't imagine what. Let's try that. I'll give you three guesses. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, a sack of potatoes. Yep, it's a sack of potatoes. Oh! You know, because potatoes are my favorite thing in the universe and I just couldn't stay away from them. <laughs> no, dummy. It's some credits I earned to pay you back. It's not much compared to what you did for me, but I hope it helps. Here. Hey. 3,000 credits. All right. Uh, what are you doing for work now? Oh, I'm just working the front desk at a local accounting practice. It's not glamorous, but it pays the bills while I take classes. I haven't decided whether I want to pursue a history degree or get into film studies. I've always been interested in Earth culture, so one of those seems appropriate. It's the least you could do, or thank you so much. Oh, no problem. I wanted to keep my word. Anyway, I was hoping you could do one last favor for me. Since you have a ship, would you be able to deliver a letter to my sister Julia for me? Not right now. I'm kind of busy, or I'm not even sure where they are right now, but I'll find them and get it to her. I wasn't planning on going back, but as long as you don't mind me taking my time, I'll do it. Um, well, do. I'm not even sure where they are right now, but I'll find them and get it to her. Oh, good point. Well, if you do come across them in your travels, please give this to Julia. It would mean a lot to me. Let me just add a few more details to my letter. And... Okay, there. Cool. Thanks again. Take care. I'm glad we bumped into her. We flew up to the star, and we were so close, I could feel the heat from the sunbursts. And that's when they said the words, Will you marry me? Gonna be honest, I don't really care. That <laughs> Veruna. <laughs> oh, that's rough. Oh, that's rough. She's telling the story about how she got engaged, and her friend's like, Yeah, I gotta be honest, I don't really care. <laughs> that's great. That's brilliant. All right, I gotta see what this letter is. New items 27. Hold on. <laughs> Dear Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Julia, I know you were upset that I left the Constant. It wasn't an easy decision for me either, but you know I was unhappy there, drifting aimlessly forever. I hope you understand why I had to go, just as I understand why you had to stay. Things are going very well for me here in New Atlantis. I have a job, working the front desk at a small accounting business while I take classes. I'm not sure what I'm working towards yet, but I'm thinking of either majoring in Earth history or media production so I can work in film. I know, big difference, but you know I've always been jealous of your job aboard the Constant, and now I can pursue something like that on my own. I've also been seeing someone I met after striking up a conversation while getting lunch one day. Their name is Bodhi, and so far, things are going well with them. Anyway, I hope this letter finds you soon. Maybe I can come visit next time I hear of the Constant's whereabouts? Love, Janet. Embassy building is such an eyesore. Why don't they just tear it down already? <laughs> they have the same I face, too. They They're related. 
they're sisters or something. And she's like, yeah, you just got engaged. I don't care. I just don't think we'll have soul. a second date. I barely survived the first one. Oh, yeah? Wow. That was rough. <laughs> Need me to help out anywhere? What are you doing here? Well, hey, what are you doing here? How can I help you? And how can I not help you? Because I want to make sure I never do those things. Okay, do you mind if I ask you some personal questions? Yes, my liege. Whatever you want to know. Have we gone through everything? Nope, that's it. Until next time. There will be a next time. Uh, won't there? Poor guy. We're just bumping into everybody today. <laughs> Be scanned as you enter the city. Please keep moving. Got anything you need to offload? Okay, <clears throat> let's sell um, five thousand credits and sell the spacesuit. And weapons. I don't remember if I have another Nova Light. Um, I don't need the calibrated Orion anymore, as I have another Orion. So we'll sell that. And these are the, the only other one I got is the calibrated regulator. If it had a suppressor, that would be great. Packs, we've got the ablative, which we can sell. Trade oh, for God's by. sake, drop some of that rubbish already. Patience, patience. Let's go to inventory resources. Store all resources. Puts us at 125. Okay, Sarah. Let's just... Okay, friends like these. Return to the Deputy McIntyre. Katie Pat... Patton became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Katie. You'll be scanned as you enter the city. Please keep moving. Okay. No bounty. You're clear. Normal user says, bro should have killed Sarah. Like I said, Barrett is infinitely better, and you killed him! Well, I am having regrets at this point in my life. Um, yeah, we what all, is it? We all live with regrets, don't we? Okay. Nope, we gotta go up to Mast. Julian Z says, I feel like Ox is going to find out real soon which companion are set to essential and which are not. What does that even mean? Are you suggesting that I turn on Sarah and kill her? I'm not quite that upset with her. Serpent says, hi Ox, Serpent here, no relation. Who do you prefer, Piper Wright or Sarah Morgan? I think I might on also record, build an enclave base response. on the moon in my game. By top officials, the cabinet already has a plan in place to open the Armistice Archives. Unless that archive's full of ordnance, it's not enough. I see, well, thank you for taking the time. Mm, hey, reporter. publish what I said, all right? Something needs to be done. Oh, I'm as concerned as you are. Thank you again for speaking with me. Interesting. Um, I guess I'd choose Piper Wright. As annoying as she can sometimes be. Yes? You needed something?
Okay. Keep it moving. Pardon. Captain, I just received a couple messages from an operative in the embassy office. Did, did you actually succeed? With Radcliffe and Balmore. Was he alive? Did they both actually agree? It was harder than expected, but yes, all parties are on board. Or Balmore's alive thanks to yours truly, and yes, I got his code. Code pieces from House Varun and the Freestar, collected and ready to be deployed. So the old man was still lurking around in there. Fine work, Captain. And now, I've already arranged everything with the archival monitors. When you get down there, the UC monitor will give you instructions on how to deploy the codes. Follow them to the letter. Oh, great. Here, the UC code piece and an archival access card. The entrance is just on the other side of the plaza across from Mast. Absolute best behavior down there, all right? Right, we get to finally do it. Elias De Beer says, Ox, you have two skill points. Oh, you're right. Well, I want to unlock weapon engineering. To do that, I could dump a point into geology to get rank two, get more rare inorganic resources from surface objects, or medicine. Med packs, trauma packs, and emergency kits restore 10% additional health 10% faster. 20%, 30%, 50% %, and have a chance to cure an affliction. Uh, let's do this. I can now craft improved weapon mods at a weapon workbench and research additional weapon mods at the research station. Challenge, craft five weapon mods. Yes? Okay. Oh. Keeping the skies safe out there? Normal user says, Oxhorn, why don't you upgrade your combat more? Um, you know, I'm getting to it. Uh, the thing is, in the early stages of the Diplomacy game... Diplomacy would never die. I wanted access to the best dialogue options and uh, the best uh, doors and safes as early as possible to make the rest of my playthrough easier later on. After the UC Navy's defeat at the Battle of Cheyenne by the Freestar Collective's ragtag fleet, both sides decided the time had come to bring the colony war to an end. So the two parties came together to negotiate the terms of the armistice. Fleet sizes would be capped, mechs and xeno weapons outlawed, and all research related to those fields would be kept under lock and key in their own special archive. Which actually rests below our feet as we speak. And while these new restrictions transformed the settled systems overnight, entire economies were upended with the flick of a pen. Mm. They also marked the start mm. of something critical cooperation between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective for the first time in decades. A pledge between the powers for a more harmonious future. Thank you for listening. Thank you. The archives themselves are off limits, but you're free to look around up here. Actually, I have permission. Armistice Archives. Safeguard the past, secure the future. We recall the cost of unfettered war. We stand as the bulwark of peace. Don't mind me. Stopping by. Wow. Super high Captain, security. We've been expecting you. Please 
approach the monitoring station and we will go over the rules. Approach the oh, wrong one. Okay. Go over the rules, yeah. Welcome, Captain, to the archives. To proceed, you will need to deposit your codes into the three corresponding receptacles. Once they are verified, I will open the door. Your data resides in Unit 18. You will not be able to access any of the other units. Once you've collected your data, return to the entrance. You may insert the first of the archival codes when you're ready to begin. Good to have you back. I'll be out in a bit. Okay, Unit 18. All right. Archive access code receptacle. Interesting. So I need to go to that one or that one. Well, where's unit 18? Do they all connect? Or that one? Huh. Okay, well, let's do this one. Oh, I see. Three codes, three receptacles. You may proceed, Captain. And here we are. Okay. These are the archives. Archives 0 through 9, A through F, G through M. NT Unit 18 Can I do anything else while I'm here? Is it even possible to mess this part of the quest up? Am I being timed? Sarah, before you get locked in. Alright, there we go. Can I open this door? Wow, this is a mess. <clears throat> Can I open all of them? Ah, that's a lock. Probably shouldn't open that. So that's House Varun. So that's UC, and that's Freestar. No, that's UC, and that's Freestar. Okay. And that's House Varun. Right, well, we got what we came for. Let's go. from that crazy guy. Man, New Atlantis gets weirder by the day. Was that the adoring fan? <laughs> he saw me hey. running from the adoring fan. There you are. Captain, Deputy told me what went down. Impressive work. 
Captain, if you'd be willing to transfer the documents to the Major, she and I have been discussing what comes next. Time for us to start getting some real answers, and figure out if we've been asking the right questions. So whenever you're ready. Is the answer to stopping more attacks really in here? You're carrying the most comprehensive collection of information on Terramorphs in the known universe. If we can't pry an answer out of there, it likely doesn't exist. Certainly doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but we're not going to know until Percival and I dig in, so whenever you're ready. I made someone a promise. Hadrian, can you assure me this data will be used for good? I... Yes, it will be. Percival and I have done our damage. This, this is us starting to put some things right. So with the data out of the way, we've been discussing where exactly this work's getting done. The Red Devil's headquarters on Mars, back where you found Percival, seemed the natural spot. Already has the equipment, the safety measures. Though it sounded like the deputy had a few more things she needed to discuss with you first. Indeed. The most important of which is getting you your citizenship. Hey. Then I guess we'll see you on Mars. Captain, if you'll follow me. Okay. Citizenship, hooray. That's an amazing view, look at that! I think I got lucky. I came out uh, during a sunset. Look at the shadows cast. Alright, Captain. Are you ready to become a citizen of the United Colonies? This doesn't mean I can't be a citizen elsewhere, does it? It doesn't. We don't really care where else you might have been or might become a citizen. Once you earn your place in the United Colonies, it's yours. I'm ready. Good. This isn't the only item we need to discuss, so I'll give you the short version. Please raise your hand. Captain, through your actions today and in days past, you have earned your place among the United Colonies. Through service, bravery, strength, and upholding of the mutual good. Will you carry and cultivate these values for as long as you remain a citizen? <clears throat> I really gotta do all that? Sure, whatever. I will. 
Uh, then, Captain, I'm pleased to welcome you into the United Colonies as a full citizen. Here, your official ID and your citizenship dispensation. We've also let the Aphelion Realty Office out in the plaza know you're approved to purchase property. Now, the other item we needed to discuss. There's a member of the UC who's asked to speak to you, but this person is in a... sensitive position. Normally, we wouldn't even consider something like this, but we think this person has information that could prove useful in dealing with the Terramorphs. And they've stated they'll only share it with you. They asked for you by name. Hmm. So I need your agreement that everything you're about to see is kept in the strictest confidence. You can tell no one. Can you agree to these terms? Asked for me by name? Who are you talking about? I'm sorry. I can't share any more without your word. Do I have it? <clears throat> okay, I'll take it to my grave. Let's hope it never comes to that. Head to the elevator. You're going to subsection 7. I'll make sure you're cleared for access by the time you get there. Subsection 7, eh? Well, that's cryptic. The devils you know. Proceed to your meeting in subsection 7. Wow, this quest just keeps on going. Something to report? For me by name. Subsection 7. Tony J says, no express elevator down ox? No, I'm not wearing power armor. What's this? Come on, tidy up here. What is this? A storage facility? Huh. I've what? lived in New Atlantis almost my entire life, and I had no idea this place even existed. The UC certainly excels at keeping secrets. Yeah, I'm curious about who's who knows about me and who wants a meeting. Door locked, expert. We've got explosives in there. This one is open. Black market antiquities. What? <laughs> okay, we can take it. Like, all right. Um, material repository requires a key. Hmm. Expert. Biological contaminants, expert. Buckets of paint, expert. Armor, ooh. Inaccessible. Big tanks, expert. Security, hello. Inaccessible. Logging authorized entry, unsealing access. You may proceed down the corridor. But there are no additional visitors permitted. Your friend's gonna have to wait out here. I'll be fine. You go on ahead. Hmm? Okay. You wait there, Sarah. I'll uh, be back. I'm gonna explore up here, though. There's a container in there with more paint. Expert. We've got relics and stuff. Expert. It's not showing me what's in that one. Interesting. Wow! That's Sarah! Okay. A level clearance required. We should do a hard save here, just in case.
Is that... Is that they vict us? That's they vict us. They didn't kill him. Oh, plot twist. Oh, if the Free Star knew about this. Oh, man, if the Free Star knew about this, there would be hell to pay. Oh, and I got to keep this quiet now. Shoot. <laughs> All right. Well, now I guess it makes sense why the UC agreed to it so readily. They, uh, they didn't intend to do it. Matt Rowland says, looked like you found the Institute. Yeah, looks like it. But what a life! Stuck down here in this cell forever? Oh man, I don't know if I would want that life. Looks like it's luxury accommodations, but forever is forever. I'll be there in a minute, General. I'm, whoa. Just looking around. Yeah. That's the Victus. President Abeo was kind enough to give me a few files to peruse. Quite the series of accomplishments you've managed. But now you face a foe unlike any other. An invisible enemy lurking in the shadows. You're going to need all the help you can get. Which is why I hoped we could speak. Do you know who I am? <clears throat> oh, and the game doesn't think that I'd be able to figure this out by now. A guy who couldn't afford a place with a view, clearly... Given the amount of security, I'd say you're someone pretty important or dangerous. You do look familiar. Nope, can't say I do. I mean, we know who it is. This is her clone. Or actually, she is his clone. Ah, uh, there's a reason for that. Introductions first, though. I'm Francois Fanon. But most know me as Vevictus. I was an admiral during the Colony War. One of its great villains, if you believe the slates. I was to be executed for my crimes. But the previous regime deemed me... too valuable to simply discard. So they put me here. A sacrifice on the altar of peace. Even my death served the colonies. Mm -hmm. So, what'd you do? To warrant my execution. The official charges I faced after the war were twofold. The first was the destruction of civilian ships during the Battle of Cheyenne, a battle during which those civilian ships were actively attacking my fleet. That's what the I thought. The other was ordering the bombing of the Londinian spaceport to halt the spread of the Terramorph outbreak there. The city and its citizens were lost, but countless others likely saved. I thought that and as well. And for doing what was right, I was put on trial. And my life irrevocably changed. That is interesting. I'm surprised. E even when I heard this history, I thought there was something off about that. I mean, if the Freestar Collective is going to arm ships, civilian ships, and put them into combat... They're no longer civilian ships. Okay. Um, the UC faked your death then. One final act of rebellion by the leadership that lost the colony war. The trial was authentic. I faced tribunal with dignity. But my execution... Staged. A lethal injection that was anything but. The cabinet at the time... Long gone now. Wish to keep me on as an advisor. And considering the other option, I was in no place to refuse. So I elected to trade my freedom for my continued existence. But such is the life of a soldier. Well, what about the other two? <clears throat> the uh, history tells us that there were three that were executed. Not just him. 
were the others also kept? We could say Sanon. That's Hadrian's last name, or definitely one of the chattier ghosts I've met, except about what you actually want, or my god, the UC has been lying all this time. Let's do Hadrian's last name. Very astute. That's my daughter. My progeny. You've been working alongside. Has she shared with you the nature of our little family? Yours and Hadrian's relationship is your business, not mine. Kind of a stretch to call what you two had a family. She told me she's your clone, yes. Uh, did she? So willing to trust Hadrian. I never did succeed in driving that out of her. Our relationship has always been a challenging one. The Major was born to become a great leader, carry on the legacy I established and was given all the finest training to support it. And she excelled. But the universe cut all that short. Now, though, it's placed even more crucial work in front of the two of you. And I think I have a part to play in helping you accomplish what you've set out to do. Can you tell me, about, uh, tell me more about this cloning program? It was an attempt by the United Colonies to solidify its own legacy. Forging a new generation of great leaders. They were raised by adoptive families made up of scholars and tacticians. Trained at the United Colony's greatest scientific and military academies. Displayed incredible promise. But by the time the colony war came to a close, there was only Hadrian. But that's ancient history now. You have much more pressing matters at hand with which I can help. <clears throat> Not every day I get the chance to work with a man living in a fish tank. Keep talking. Or Hadrian and I are doing just fine on our own, or fine, I'm listening. After some long years earning the trust of this current regime, the UC has been permitting me to work alongside one of their recovery teams, helping them gather intelligence on, locate, and organize scenarios to lure in some of the criminals that evaded justice after the colony war hmm. with quite a few successes i might add but in the process i managed to find something else the names and locations of hadrian and percival's old research team valuable manpower for the effort you're about to embark on i'll tell you where they are but in exchange i need something dealt with you track down war criminals? People like you? How's that work exactly? <laughs> well, who better to find them? But many of them I knew personally. And I've always had a mind for details. Where someone was born, next of kin. <laughs> You'd be shocked how often an otherwise brilliant criminal flees to the planet just next to the one where they were born. Or where a family member resides. I simply use my own personal knowledge and the information our group collects for me to track them down and set things right. Interesting. I mean, he clearly thinks that the crimes he was accused of were not fair, that he did what he had to as an admiral for the UC, and yet he's willing to hunt down other people accused of so-called crimes as well. Just spit out what you want, or not sure I like the sound of this, or go on. There is a former colleague of mine, a man by the name of Dr. Reginald Orlaise. Like myself and Hadrian, he was involved in some of the United Colonies' more problematic lines of research. Mech weapons were his specialty. If it dealt death, he could make a deal more. When the colony war ended, he fled refusing to face tribunal, and has continued to peddle his skills to the highest bidder to this day. Ooh. But I finally found him. I want you to track him down and deal with him, however you're able. I'm not expecting he'll come quietly. Bring me evidence that the job's done, and I'll tell you what I know. Interesting. Um, it's one thing for somebody who 
worked for his government during wartime to produce research and technology that was used in war on the behalf of his government. It's quite another thing to evade a tribunal and then continue to work on what is now illegal research and technology into mech warfare to the highest bidder. That makes him, what, a mercenary? All right, I don't mind dealing with mercenaries. Why have me do this? Why not hand this over to one of the members of this quote-unquote recovery team? Captain, your files indicate a track record of unlikely successes. It is my genuine hope that, perhaps down the line, you might become a part of our team. And this might be something of a tryout. How do I know you're not asking me to kill an innocent man? Speak to Deputy McIntyre. I'm sure she'd be happy to hear that someone might be tying up this loose end at long last. Though I would ask you, do not make the mistake of confusing me for a simple cutthroat. Optional, speak to Deputy McIntyre. All right, I think I definitely want to do that before we actually act on this. How about I arrest him and turn him over to the UC? You can certainly try, but the man's been out there 20 years. He's likely gone feral by now. Easier for all if you simply blow up his ship and be done with it. I need to think about this. Consider him dust. I'm not killing anyone, but if he's actually as bad as you claim, I'll consider bringing him to justice. Let's see what happens if we choose that. If that's what you require to sleep at night, so be it. It is. According to my information, he's been hiding around the world of Etheria. Wolf system. There's a star station in the vicinity. The Den. The head of the local vanguard, one Captain Marquez, should be able to help you find our man. Okay. Well, well, well. Now that is interesting. I wonder if we can talk more. The woman you're looking for is a Captain Marquez, unless there's something else you wanted to discuss. What kind of name is Ve Victus, anyway? It's a phrase, actually. In one of Earth's dead tongues. Woe to the defeated. I acquired it during my school years, after defeating an older cadet so badly that it led to his dismissal from the program. Hmm. <laughs> Since then... It's been hurled at me by critics who didn't like the methods by which I achieved victory. But I can't say I don't like it. Stood as a reminder, I wasn't a man to be trifled with. <laughs> this guy. What did you do to earn yourself an execution? The official charges I faced after the war were twofold. The first was the destruction of civilian ships during the Battle of Cheyenne. We already, we already asked during this. during which those civilian ships were actively attacking my fleet. The other was ordering the bombing of the Londinian spaceport to halt the spread of the Terramorph outbreak there. The city and its citizens were lost, but countless others likely saved. And for doing what was right, I was put on trial. And my life irrevocably changed. Hadrian's your clone, right? Even though you're different sexes? How is that possible? I was told the process was decidedly complex. While we come from the same clay, the kiln and the sculptor had much to say in who Hadrian became. For the better, we are, after all, so much more than our legacies, genetic or otherwise. We can ask him to remind us what we are doing for him, but I need no reminder. Well. Okay. I wonder if Sarah's gonna ask us about this. Identity verified. You may proceed to the exit. Okay. Yes? Let's get moving. All right, let's go. All right. Oh, wrong one.
Ever run into spacers? Scumbags and scavengers. Let's get more information about this mark. Captain, did your uh, meeting go well? I hope it's clear now why we needed you to agree to all the secrecy. I don't see why, uh, what the big deal is. Some old guy living in your basement? I could do that. Deputy, I was not prepared for that. Or there's an executed war criminal in your basement. Well, we could say that out loud, but probably not the wisest choice. Surprised me too when I learned it. But the uh, prisoner has proven useful over the years. And kept far from any major decision making. But I do think it's worth re-emphasizing. No one else can know about this. All right? Um, why hasn't Hadrian been told about this? The Major doesn't have clearance for this sort of information. And she certainly doesn't need a distraction from her current very important work. Which is why I need you to keep this to yourself. We could say you can't keep me from telling Hadrian. Or the Freestar Collective at least should be told about this. <laughs> that would not be wise. Or we can say I'll keep it to myself. Good. Because bringing this up to the outside world would create the unfair appearance, Captain, that you're unhinged. And that's not a good look for any of us. Now, was there something in particular you needed to discuss about... what we were just discussing? <laughs> I didn't have anything else to discuss, or I'm gonna be a hitman! First target, Reginald or Lace. Or we could say, the prisoner asked me to deal with a Dr. or Lace figured you and I should discuss. Dr. Reginald Orlais? He's finally found him. Of course, killing Orlais is completely out of the question. But bringing him to justice... He's been on the lam for years. That'd be a huge win for the UC. What's being offered in return? <clears throat> um... Wait, are you actually considering this? Allowing you to kill someone on behalf of the prisoner? Absolutely not. But taking the chance to bring a known criminal to justice? Well, the old man's been right more than a few times in the past. So, what's being put on the table here? The location of Hadrian's old research team members. Really? He found the members of the research team. We'd already initiated a search for them, but it'd save a lot of time and manpower if he just gave us that information. Captain, if that's the deal, you have my endorsement. Just so long as you make every effort to bring the man in alive. Now, okay. was there anything else you wanted to discuss regarding your meeting? What are the chances I'm being lured into a trap? Trusting the man downstairs would be a mistake. But I don't think you need to be too concerned. This is far from the first name he's handed over, and all previous missions went off largely without a hitch. So while I'd certainly warrant caution, I think you can proceed. I'm supposed to head to the Den. Anything you can tell me about it? The Den? It's a star station. Orbiting Wolf. The second star station, actually, to bear that title. The first one was blown to smithereens by House Varun during the Serpent's Crusade. Oh. The place has always acted as a remote strategic hub, primarily for repairing and refueling UC military vessels. But because of its distance from the rest of the UC, things there have always been a little more lax. Patrols included. I can think of worse places in the galaxy for a criminal to hide out. That was it. Then I'll bid you good day, Captain. And remind you of the importance of discretion. Yeah, considering a, an entire treaty involving all of the major political parties in this universe Excuse is me. at stake, I'd say it's definitely worth uh, keeping secret for now. Nat Station. Spaceport. Okay, well, this has been quite, quite an adventure. So much has happened, and it's all taken place here at New Atlantis. There's our ship.
For the devils, you know, we need to go track down this guy. Now, what's interesting is we've got Dear Sister, which is going to help us follow up on a previous quest that we completed. And then there was also um, the family members that we were trying to deliver messages to. Let's see. I think it's under Activities. Um... And I don't know where it is. At any rate, there are multiple reasons we need to go find the colony ship. And I'm interested in doing that. But I'm out of time right now. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast and start processing the footage. That's it for my content this week. I didn't have time to finish a lore video for the weekend. Though I did get my video on hacking done for earlier this week, which I published a couple of days ago. And we've had daily live streams of Starfield. Lots of content that we've been diving through. And you've been there for all of it. So thanks to each and every one of you. Next Monday, I believe, we'll pick up right here where we leave off to continue with the UC Quests, which has been a lot of fun. I hope you have a wonderful Friday and a restful weekend. And I'll see you all again very soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Thanks again for coming, everybody. Bye-bye.